All right, here we are. <laughs> Hello, everyone. How are you doing today? And of course, welcome to version 4.6 of Genshin Impact. And of course, we're starting here today at the House of the Hearth uh, because uh, we're going to be doing our Lakino story quest. <laughs> That's super exciting. Okay. Oh my gosh, she looks so cool. Especially like with that one wing. And of course, uh, she's being run again with Linny and Lynette and Fremine and Xiangling, of course. <laughs> and her weapon is so cool too with like, the scythe. Oh my gosh, this is going to be awesome. I decided I don't think I want to pull right now. Just uh, for a the reason of um, I don't have a ton of these gems. <laughs> I don't have a lot. I think she has new materials I need to farm for too. So I probably wouldn't get to use her right away. And if that's the case, I don't feel really any urgency to want to pull for her right now. And besides, we have all of our other lovely House of the Hearth friends with us. Uh, you know, so Once that's good. Okay, hello, Battle Pass, hello, Venti. <laughs> Um, let's see. Always so exciting to start on a new update. Okay, a dire bale moon. An after shadow that should not exist wanders the house of the hearth's halls. She flits between the shadows. The lights does the light does not touch, bringing goodwill but also hastening ill deeds. If any ask about her past, she will speak of that buried history. But more than that, she wants to know her own ending. Ooh, interesting. And the undersea capital, the lost homeland. The other thing, big thing in this update is the new Remoria area, which I'm super excited for because I really liked um, Enkonomiya in Inazuma. I think that's still one of my favorite areas in the entire game, and I wish there was more excuses to get to go there. But this place definitely seems as though it has a similar vibes, you know, the sort of ancient kingdom or ancient civilization that existed separate from the nations that really exist now these sort of forgotten places i really like to explore those and that's probably going to be in the new area too uh so why don't we do our test run though and we've learned a lot about our Lakino, the knave the fourth of the fatui harbingers um just uh hearing about her through the story and then of course meeting oh this is so cool yeah. How do I make her pyro infusion? Oh, I somehow did it. I think it was her charge attack. <laughs> oh. Heard a, a lot about... Did, I, did her burst not go? Or did it go? It did go, didn't it? <laughs> it just didn't have to show the animation. Is that right? What happened there? <laughs> no, no, no. I want to I wanna use... I want to use this. What? <laughs> I love her scythe. So uh, yeah, in the past week we've had like this. There was the a song, uh, "Burning in the Embers," animated short. There was her teaser, and so we kind of get a sense, a little bit of a sense of what her life was like before, and the House of the Hearth before she became its current um, director or leader. And it seemed like it was a lot more cutthroat. You know, the children had to fight each other to learn how to survive. Um, we've heard from other House of the Hearth mem uh, members, or maybe former members, like um, that lady in the shrine in Inazuma, or the, the dude from the Aranara quest, that seemed to not have very good experiences with the House of the Hearth. But perhaps that had to do with the you know, former management and former leadership, and we heard a little bit about that in Fremenet's story too. And we saw exactly what um, our Lucino or this current Arlequino had to go through in order to really, um, what she had to, how much she had to fight in order to basically survive, and how she wishes to kind of change the way the House of the Hearth is. As we can see from, you know, Linny and Lynette and from Anae, uh, the House of the Hearth definitely seem, is, is like a family to them. It is their family, and they know they can look up to Arlequino to guide them and protect them, but also, you know, she's a very strict sort of teacher, strict but fair in terms of wanting them to really uh, learn how to be strong on their own 
and how to defend themselves because there's a lot of hardships that they'll have to go through as, you know, as orphans and as members of the Fatui. And also just, you know, learning that, you know, I mean, we've met, we're friends with a lot of people from the Fatui. We've had our, I mean, we've, we've clashed a lot with people from the Fatui as well, but we've also made a lot of friends and just showing how big this organization is. And on top of all of that, I mean, from what we just saw in that test run, I kind of get the sense that our Lucino has some, also comes some kind of new supernatural, supernatural sort of power, which a lot of the Fatui Harbingers seem to have some kind of external power besides their visions or delusions. I mean, the whole thing with her, you know, crossed out eyes and the way she flickers around, definitely some kind of power that is there. Uh, let's see, we get our gems for that. Of course we have Mini and Fermini already. What else? Okay, let's see, get the Primo gems. Good, 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 good. All right, what is this? Oh, that's right, I'm so excited for this. Look at all of these profile pictures we can choose from. The tiny Jimmy Koshi. I, we can be we can be Jet and Ben Ben. We can be Arama the Aranara. Uh, there is Neko from the shrine with the Neko cloud. I think we we haven't gotten to that yet. <laughs> I think we haven't gotten to these ones yet. Um, there's Fujin, uh, passive <laughs> caterpillar we met recently. Uh, that is um, Elenus. Uh, Sorush, Crest of Artifice. Oh, Sichung. I hope we see her again. She's only disappeared in the chasm, right? Yeah, these are such fun little um, profile pictures, though. I'm really glad they kind of expanded on this. Is there anybody, is there anything I want to use right now? I do like the cats, I'm not going to lie. I technically already have the Daini Chimikoshi as my <laughs> thing, but it's my banner. Um... We can leave it as is right now, but I, I, I love this so much. That is so cute. Uh, okay, are you tired, Ether? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, without further ado then, look at that. Arlequino, Ignis Purgatorius, chapter act one. Wow, okay, we're ready. We're gonna start this. Enable focus experience mode to avoid conflicts. I heard this is a new thing, right? But I don't have like any other quests open, so I don't think it matters for me whether I turn this on or not. But this this sort of feature would have been super useful. Um, what's an example? Like uh, during the Iridori Festival, I kept running into all sorts of the conflicting quests happening all at once. <laughs> um, so that's really good that they add that feature in. Unfortunately, I play this game too much, and now I, I've kind of cleared the quest block backlog. Maybe we should head over and have a look around! Yeah, that's right. Okay, so last time we saw our Lakino, well, we were saying goodbye to her uh, at um, Romero Time Harbor, but uh, she helped out the Spina di Rosula and sent the House of the Hearth members to help with the flooding, but a lot of people still died. Hey, traveler. Paimon. Winnie! Oh, Hello! Paimon knows that voice! We know that voice anywhere! Over here. It's our best friend, Lenny. Hi. <laughs> Lenny, it's been too long. Actually, we didn't meet yesterday when I did Chiori's story quest, but it's been too long. <laughs> to borrow one of the more popular turns of phrase at the moment, this appears to be quite the faded reunion. Running into you two out of the blue like this has really made my day. I certainly wasn't expecting it. You can say that again. What brings you to Poisson? Yeah, what you doing here? Wait, Paimon's got it! You must be here for one of your magic shows, right? Um, actually, we've run into a bit of trouble on the home front, so Father arranged for us to stay in Poisson for the time being. Oh, oh trouble? Are Lynette and Fremenay here too? What kind of trouble? I mean, there's always trouble yep, the Fatui is concerned. with most of the other what members kind of, of the trouble? House of the Hearth. You may have noticed Poisson seems a bit more good friends here. crowded than usual. So you're saying nearly the entire organization has moved to Poisson? Sounds like you've run into way more than just a bit of trouble. What's really going on? Um, 
Well, since the two of you are so curious, perhaps I can fill your gaps. <laughs> you scared by my She's right death. behind us. <laughs> so scary. Hello. Father, How are you here. doing? Um, you know, <laughs> on second thought, maybe we don't need to know. It's all probably super <laughs> confidential House of the Heart stuff, right? We totally weren't trying to pry or anything. No he did say the next time we meet, we may have to work together your on stuff. So maybe this is of now. <laughs> I can also understand your confusion. Sending so many Fatui here to Poisson, it's only natural that some might suspect an ulterior motive to be involved. Well, we are a little curious. We still have our reservations about your organization. I understand. I'm well aware you've had your fair share of confrontations with the Fatui in the past. And I can't exactly guarantee that we'll remain on good terms in the future. As for fair right enough, now, fair however, enough. I would say we have little reason to be at odds, wouldn't you agree? The House of the Hearth yeah. could stand to be more open with those who have worked so closely with us in the past. As for the issue at that's hand, good, that's good. Well, I don't want to fight you either. To, <laughs> motive. to be frank. It all stems from a certain rumor circulating around the House of the Heart. Oh, rumors it's once again. This seems matter. to be a, a recurring well, issue sort here of in Fontaine. Rumor. <laughs> a rumor that, rumor that a certain phantom sort of child is hiding everybody. away in the House of the Heart. Oh, okay. Now I want to mention something. So in the um, animated short uh, about Arlequino or Perrier when she grew up, she had a friend named... Clervy, right? And the two of them looked like they were really good friends. Um, and then later on in life, you know, they had to fight. And honestly, watching that anime short was made me my my hands were started shaking. It was it was kind of chilling almost. But I do want to point out that in the um, web uh, preview for version four point six, it does show. Linny and Lynette and Femine hanging out with the little girl who kind of looks like Clervy from the animated short even though it seems like she uh, died. <laughs> um, I just want to throw that out there and I don't know what the- I have no idea what that's going to mean for the story other than there seems to be some kind of connection there. Some kind of ghost story, maybe? I feel like I'm getting the chill. I literally, I literally did getting that, that, watching that animated short. Oh, phantom child. Who just hearing the name is giving Paimon on the creeps. A spirit that should have long ceased to exist is lurking in the shadows of the House of the Hearth. So I decided to bring the children to Poisson before continuing to investigate the situation. I expect I should be able to track down the spirit fairly quickly. After that, it's just a matter of resolving the situation, if you will. It shouldn't be much trouble at all. If you're okay. curious, or if you still have some concerns, it might be advisable to for stick it. around <laughs> for a few days. I'm sure the children would be exceedingly pleased to welcome some visitors. Lenny, sure. I'll leave you to entertain our guests. I have some matters to attend to. Of course, Father. All right, what are we up to today, Lenny? Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> what is, what is, what is happening here? I couldn't help but feel intimidated during that conversation with the knave. Now that she's gone, oops, whoops, <laughs> Ether. She also suggested that we stick around for a few days. But why? Hmm. It has long been a dream of mine to invite you to our home and introduce you to my other siblings. You're quite oh, well known in the organization already. A lot of people have been talking about you, especially after everything with the prophecy. If you're willing, why don't you stay a while? We did get quite involved around here, didn't we? <laughs> We'd love to. All right. We don't have anything else to do right now anyway. But let's be clear. We're just going to be there as guests, okay? Don't get any funny. Oh, wait a second. For your <laughs> it probably means we'll be treated to lots of yummy food, right? Of course. That's right. During That's our stay in Poisson, we've been helping out the locals with some fishing. Hosts. We bring in Often quite the comes bounty the form every day. Of food. <laughs> in fact, today is the perfect chance for me to show you what I can do in the kitchen. Let's go. I'll take you to where we're staying. That's awesome. When the hearth flame goes out. Ooh, spooky. 
But I kind of noticed um, with Arlequinos, uh, her design, like the way her hair is done, and it looks kind of like a bird, like the way her ponytail clip, and also just, you know, the, the way her hair is swept to the side kind of looks like bird feathers. But, um, and you know, because we know there's a boss fight coming up. But with her, the theme with her boss fight is more like a spider. Um, and just kind of that sort of contrast. And she has like a wing, but it doesn't look like a bird wing, or wings maybe. So just putting out, putting out some symbols. We rented this house from one of the locals here. to use as a temporary base. I'll come back later and tidy It looks kind of like the house that, that you used in all the for you to stay magic tonight. trick to trap Farina. Awesome. <laughs> so that still is incredible. How did you? Even with when with unlimited money and resources, area, how could you dig a tunnel that long from Poisson to the Opera Epicles? With this many people staying in Poisson, we have <laughs> in to just bring a couple days. <laughs> I should probably make sure the rest of these provisions get delivered. Otherwise, people might start to get antsy. Okay, we'll come with. There are all love sorts of rumors up. about your organization floating around out there. Primon's not sure if she could even take a wild guess as to what's true and what's not. But now that we finally have the chance to see a day in the life of the house, we can take a good look at how you operate! Well, you're more than welcome to come along. Just follow me. Yeah. Get to know them a little bit more. See what it's like. <laughs> Um, okay, going up here, help Lenny distribute some books. <gasps> will do, will do. Lenny! We're finally here! The supplies! I'm assuming you've brought them with me? Yep, here you go. Uh, hello? Something caught your eye? It's the Traveler and Paimon! Oh, hello! <laughs> no way! Whoa, they all Here know us. Time. I guess it's we're pretty famous in, in every nation that we've left our mark on, aren't we? <laughs> One at a time, please. Don't crowd around them all at once. We don't want to scare off our guests now, do we? <laughs> No, oh, it's, it's great that right? we're so welcome to you. I didn't realize we were this famous. <laughs> of course. Father and Linny have told us so much about you. Father told us about how you helped Linny. According to her, you're a trustworthy friend. And as far as she's concerned, that's pretty much the highest compliment we've ever heard her give. As you can imagine, everyone's well, been very curious I'm about very you. Very happy to. I heard the traveler is so able strong. To gather he the praise of someone as esteemed as her. <laughs> maybe, so maybe. That she can clean out the entire pantry at Hotel Tabor in just three days. Definitely true. <laughs> Definitely true. Oh, <laughs> not cool at all. Mine's also a bit of a stretch. I mean, to be fair, Ether can control rocks. Maybe not a whole mountain, but you know, we've seen Ether do some pretty cool stuff. <laughs> oh wait, when guests visit, you're supposed to give them gifts and stuff, right? Oh, we don't need something we like that. We don't have to. Besides, we don't have anything to give to you. It's very kind of you. <laughs> Come on, we insist. I can give you some of my new potions. Just pick your poison. And by that, I'm <laughs> for actual poison. I've got both. Huh? Um, probably... Or maybe... Medicine. <laughs> guys about He's super good at it. He's never been caught. Ah, oh, now that's not a bad idea. I know you usually prefer to fight head on, but it never That's true. Back There's a lot of stealth right? missions, but we don't seem to be very good at them. That might be a good thing for us to work on. <laughs> Trust me, I would know. I was poisoned yep. not too long ago, and I'm still dealing with the after effects. Oh, so I'm no. not quite as good as I was before, but I can still I hope, give you some pointers. I hope you're able to make a full recovery. Uh, wait, uh, when you said gifts, I didn't think you meant poison and stealth tactics. But those are the best things we can give you. You don't like them? Ooh, that's not what Paimon means. It's just that Paimon never um, really met somebody who's offered those gifts before. The dangerous suggestions keep coming on right, after another. <laughs> I think that's enough suggestions for now. 
When it comes to being a good host, it's the thought that counts. Yeah, I think we're good for now, but thank you so much. And it, I mean, yeah, it definitely in feels fact, really nice to them be with suggestion after so welcome in a place like make this. Them more annoyed <laughs> than anything. I would say your enthusiasm has certainly gotten across. Really? <laughs> Uh, absolutely. We definitely feel the love. Yes, that's awesome. very true. <laughs> it's been so long since we've had guests to play with. If there's anything you need, just let us know. Of yeah. course, thank you so Especially much. Especially if it's poison or something. I've got all <laughs> sorts of potions for that. <clears throat> well, I'm sure you will all make you wonderful all secret agents someday. <laughs> all right, see with you all later. the poison and stuff. <laughs> and we see Lenny kind of being like a cool older brother to this entire gang over here Bye. that's okay you don't it's the thought that counts <laughs> um, <laughs> Lindy. about all that poison and stuff tactics talk just now i mean sure it's normal for them <laughs> you, did it? that kind of talk comes with being part of the house of the hearth when Foltz was really young he strangled all of his family pets just out of curiosity he was labeled a dangerous problem child and was abandoned by oh, his family. Oh, okay. Elwar has an unnatural obsession with potions. Father has forbidden her from trying all the different concoctions she comes up with, but she still tries to test them in secret. You really have to keep But an it eye seems on like one. the family here sort Chaplo of keeps each other out of age. trouble, so I'm sure that's While not anything to worry about. For collecting intelligence, <laughs> he handles surveillance. He's very passionate about his work and has no reservations about taking on some very difficult missions. I know you two probably aren't used to that kind of talk, but I can promise you they only had the best of intentions. Things yeah, like I stealth tactics tell. and developing <laughs> different poisons, they really mean a lot to them. They were just trying to share the best of what they could offer, that's all. Yeah, I, mean, I could definitely sense that, you know. They probably they probably don't get to talk with other guests from outside the house very often. <laughs> so to them it's not weird at all, and I totally understand that. Uh, let's see. Continuing distributing distributing cats! <laughs> Filial supplies are here. Thanks. And who are these two? <gasps> Outsiders? Ah, huh, allow me to introduce you. This is the Traveler and Paimon. Oh, Hello. you're the famous duo I've been hearing so much about. It's nice to meet <laughs> I guess that's you. I heard you've traveled to all sorts of places. Is that true? Of yes. We're, making We're our way still way traveling. To that. It's lots of fun. Oh, good for you. You must be pretty familiar with Fontaine by now, then. Have you seen the new opera that started running recently? I think it's called... The Four Thousand Thieves? Oh, this is the first we've heard of it. It you know, seems like it's going to, to be fantastic. <laughs> uh, Maybe we go see it then. What I've been able to tell from the posters, anyway. Uh, you should definitely check it out if you have the time. Okay. okay. And there's the Blind Maiden, too. That one is supposed to have audience interaction. Seems pretty interesting. Okay. As you spend some time talking about popular culture, After the atmosphere the becomes more, is more over, relaxed. I think I'll go get a manicure. <laughs> Yeah, I could oh, definitely uh, tell. Maybe I should a little on edge at first, but not as much now. Wonder how much it'll cost. Um, is it just Paimon, or do these two seem much easier to get along with than the others? Looks like the House of the Hearth has some normal members after all. <laughs> I heard that. Well, it's all a mix, Paimon. Oh. Maybe you shouldn't say that in uh, front of people. Maybe we'll wait until you walk away first. <laughs> I'm guessing you're referring to Foltz and the others. Yeah, we're definitely not all like them. I bet those crazies are practically foaming at the mouth right now. I'm sure they just can't wait to get back to Snezhnaya to carry out the plan. That's well, enough, that's Bilio. not quite the nice wording that you've just Don't used there. Don't talk about family members behind their back, right? <laughs> Whatever. That's well, I suppose if you have a family with it's um, this big with yes, this, is this goodbye, many... Then. If you ever have some time, the mixture the of together. people might be hard for everybody to get along. Um, so what is this? What is this plan, uh, Linny, that they refer well, to? That's it for the supplies. <laughs> we should probably head back as well. Well, 
Well, they didn't seem too happy with each other. Seems like there could be something more going on here. Definitely more going on. Uh, it's better not to pry. We should observe for now. Knowing us, we're going to get roped into whatever sort of crazy stuff happens anyway. So I, I assume we don't need to look too deeply into that for now. But we're definitely just seeing sort of the, you know, uh, the way that a lot of the members do get along and a lot of the members don't get along. And that's to be expected when everybody comes from different backgrounds. You're right. We're only here as guests after all. Oh, uh... Linny's getting super far ahead. Come on, let's get Yeah, up. and I think we should probably stick with Linny because, uh, you know, he knows the ropes and and stuff. <laughs> and looks like there's more trouble in store next month too. Ah, <sighs> when will it Cat. end? Hey, just focus on the positives. At least our time in Poisson has been pretty relaxing, don't you think? <laughs> it has, hasn't it? Poisson was the site of a lot of, you know, disaster before. And the House of the Hearth was definitely instrumental in helping restore it to its, you know, current, current state, which is very good. <laughs> All right, what's going on, so, Lenny? what do you think of the members you've met so far? They've certainly got a lot of personality. That's, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Father is always encouraging us to be strong-willed and independent. So if there's one thing we've got, it's people who aren't afraid to speak their mind. Well, I should I probably can see that. get yeah. cooking. <laughs> Wanna join? Of sure. Course. Then let's head out. Uh huh. Fremine, what are you doing here? Fremine. Uh, when did you show up? Well, um. Fremine, nice to see you again. Oh. Uh, How you doing? You too. I heard you're here as guests of House of the Hearth. Welcome. Oh, thank we were just you. going to make some food. Why don't you come along? I could use some help in the kitchen, and I seem to remember you mentioning you wanted to make seafood soup for the traveler in Paimon. <laughs> <laughs> seafood soup? Oh, Paimon is drooling already. <laughs> were you yeah, looking for we something love just that. now, Fremine? Maybe I can help. Uh, it's nothing. I just wanted to see if there were any extra supplies. Yeah, okay. we've got some left over. What do you need? Some food and water. And some clean cloth, if possible. No problem. Give me a second here. Food, water... Wait a minute. What do you need all of those for? You're not on any missions as far as I'm aware. And you were just going to come eat with us. So what's this all about? Oh, Fermini, when are, uh, when are I you? I thought I'd grab an extra when portion. When are you hiding? Because I get hungry at night. Fermini! Could be because I'm growing, you know? And... Uh... Fremine. Do you Fremine. remember what I told you? You're not like me. Your lying skills still need some No, he's so honest. Tell He's so wholesome. He can't tell a lie. Is it really bad enough that you have to keep it from your own brother? Um, maybe it'll be better if we gave them some space. Yeah. Uh, mm. We'll get roped into this at some point anyway. But yes, let's just let them talk. This is the first time I've seen that kind of look on your face. Whatever happened, does it have something to do with father? <sighs> yes. Just uh, follow me. Figure out what Fremine is hiding. Well, if you saw the trailer, you probably have a, a hunch. <laughs> going up? Where are we going? Probably, probably going up. <laughs> are we getting closer? We are getting. Or closer, further away? I don't know. I assume I have to go around here and go around the back. <sighs> I knew it could it couldn't be good. <laughs> you're back! Oh, and you've brought some friends with you this time. Hello, my name's Linny. I grew up in the house of the hearth. And you are? Hi, Linny. I'm all 
also a child of the House of the Heart, just like you. You can call oh, no. me Claire V. Claire V? It's, it's Claire nice v. to meet you. Well, hello. How Does are you? That name ring any bells, Lenny? No, not at all. That's not a name we have on our roster. I'm sure of it. What I'm not sure of, though, is how she managed to sneak in. She must be the phantom child father's been searching for. From the looks of it, I'm guessing you were the one that found her, Fremini. You, uh, haven't told father, have you? No. It does not seem I like he has. Anyone. I've just been keeping her hidden. For how long? This definitely About does seem the kind of thing for me to do, trying to now. protect her, right? So ever since we got to Poisson, then, do you have any idea what you're doing? I know what I'm doing. Really? Because from where I'm standing, it looks like you're hiding the very person Father has been trying to find. If Father finds out about this, everyone involved is going to be punished. You know the rules of the house, Fremine. I know you do. Father doesn't tolerate any form of betrayal. So why are you doing this? Well, I've hold on. Through, Maybe we should understand why. And I just what can't hand her over like that. This child, Lenny, a phantom don't child. Don't you remember here. last year? <laughs> Sheplo nearly died after getting poisoned during that one mission. He wasn't able to get back before the poison started taking effect, and not a single person was there to help him. That night, while I was sleeping. I heard a voice telling me to go save him. I opened my eyes, but I couldn't find the source of the voice. I thought maybe I was just hearing things, but I went to look for him anyway. Luckily, I got there with enough time to save his life. That feeling of being haunted, of hearing voices, it's happened many times in the House of the Hearth. I'm sure you've noticed. Is so it what because you're of her? Saying is, that was her? She was the one who spoke to you that night? Unless there are other spirits roaming around the House of the Hearth, I don't think there's any other possibility. If Claire V were our enemy, it wouldn't matter whether she was a spirit or an actual child. I would have acted without a second thought, because that's what Father ordered us to do. Aww. But she's been living with us. Helping us from the yeah, shadows she has all this been time. Helping. I think that makes her family. I couldn't just hand her over to be dealt with. Not when there's so much we still don't know. So I what's see. your plan then? You can't keep her here forever. Someone is bound to find out eventually. I like us, like the three of us then now found yet. out. I don't want to disobey an order from father. But I also don't want to put Claire V in danger. Come with me. There are a couple things I'd like to say to you in private. Okay. I guess it's our job to... to watch the child then. Which we will happily do. Now... <laughs> Those two sure care a lot about each other. I know, right? So awesome. This is 100% Claire V who... who died in the other video which was set before this story takes place and she was an adult in that so I don't know what this means <laughs> okay um how would you tell us a little bit about yourself then? We've been learning about all the different members of the House of the Hearth. And we'd love to learn a little bit about what you do, Clarvy. Uh, well, they got a funny way of showing it. From where Paimon was floating, it sure seemed like they were about to bite each other's heads off. No oh, that's way. just what, you know, siblings really do. <laughs> I could tell right away, because I also have a friend like that. I just don't know how long that kind of bond can last. What do you mean? The darkness in the house runs deeper than you can imagine. No one can get out alive. I'm sorry, Lenny. That sounds I really very didn't ominous. Mean to drag anyone else into this. Oh, really? You didn't mean to? Cuz I for one wish you did. Huh? <laughs> Aww. What do you mean? You know, 
When we were younger, you didn't call me Linny. You called me brother, just like Lynette. We grew up together, the three of us. We were all orphans, all rescued by father. Of all the siblings in the House of the Hearth, I think our bond was the closest. Later on, when you started calling me Linny, I wasn't actually surprised. After all, Lynette and I are related by blood. We've had to depend on each other to survive long before we joined the house. Linny, I... The darkest and most difficult moments of my life happened before you and I had ever met. I'm sure that's true for you as well. Even so, Fremenay, we have stood been by each other for moments. all these years now, and to me, that means more than blood. You and Lynette are the most yeah. important people in my life. No one can replace you. So I won't let you face anything alone. Not if I can help it. Oh, it looks like things are getting kind of heated between Linny and Fremen, eh? Maybe we oh, should go I'm check sure on them. I'm sure they're fine, Paimon. <laughs> I'm oh, sure they're fine, raining. but at the same time... I should put my clothes away. Oh, it's raining. I should put my clothes away. At the same time, they could probably use the support of some friends. I'm not sure if they're ready uh, for us to talk hey, to them you yet. Too. Hope we aren't interrupting anything. Like a fight. I or... don't think it's a fight, no. Oh, Just wait a... a minute, Fremenate. A passionate Hi, conversation. <laughs> Everything's fine. Thanks okay. for asking. Plus, well, well, we're here we're all friends here, right? This. We've been through so much together, so if there's anything we can do to help, just say the word. It's just a small family dispute. It's not something our guests should trouble themselves with. In fact, it might be better if your stay ended here. But sometimes having guests around can come in handy. I do think that's true either. I think we should come back in five minutes. I think we still need to just give them some space to talk it out first. And then we can start, you know, talking about what exactly we're going to do. And yes, we're going to stay involved in this because if we leave now, we're going to somehow end up involved in this anyway. So we may as well just stick with it. But I do think we should just give Lenny and Fermanay some uh, space. What are you getting at, Traveler? When guests are around, families are often on their best behavior. And any disputes are less likely to escalate. Oh yeah, that That's too. That's what you're trying to say, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I think it would be better if we stick around. That wasn't what I was thinking, but that is absolutely true I as well. Just... <sighs> Thank you. I was really hoping to keep you out of it. But even if I could think of some other reason to turn you away, I'm not sure I could convince you. I know things could turn dangerous, so I promise you this. From now on, I'll protect you like my life depends on it. Me too. Oh, thank you. Well, and back don't to the say it like you're gonna die, but thank, thank if you. If we don't plan on Winnie. handing Clarvy over to Father, and we, we then our the only other option too. is to solve the mystery of her identity before Father is able to track her down. That means finding out where she came from and what she's doing here. Then we can send her on her merry way and pretend like none of this ever happened. I've tried that already. Okay, and how... How that turned And? Out? Yeah, and? And... Nothing. I tried taking her somewhere really far away, but... After some time, she just reappeared. She even okay. came with us all the way to Poisson. It seems like wherever the house is, she follows. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know much about spirits. Do you two have any ideas? I... let's see here. Oh, I... Paimon remembers hearing something like... If you fulfill a spirit's last wish before they die, they'll let go of whatever's keeping them here and return to the ley lines. Oh, yeah, that yeah, that's worked out for us in the past with spirits, so, so maybe so that'll work out here too. To work or anything. I mean, we've well, sort of seen that like with worth a shot. past memories fading back into the lane lines, wish. like in um, the Ride in Shogun, First, second story quest. Fremini, I need you to promise me something. What is it? I need you to promise me that this will stay between the two of us. We're the masterminds behind this whole thing. No one else gets involved. Can you do that for me? Of 
Of course. I promise. All right. Well, we're gonna try our then best. Then let's seal the promise just like when we were kids. Fist bump on Aww, three. Fist bump. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> oh, Lynette, where did you come from? <laughs> she was here the whole time. She's a cat. She sneaks in. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I love her deadpan face. You scared what, me. What a surprise. <clears throat> what brings you here, dear sister? <laughs> she was here the whole time. And uh when exactly did you get here? <laughs> You're an idiot, brother. <laughs> Well, you three traveler, and you four Paimon. Wait, hey, wait, I knew that you were gonna show up at some point because I if we Lynette got roped into this, I'm sure Lynette before. would get to. <laughs> I haven't seen her in Poisson, so I figured she must not have come with us. But it turns out. Oh, you even knew Clairvy was here. Okay. I heard you well, talking about guess, your plan. You know, like I said, she's Rather a cat. Nothing, nothing, nothing gets faster. I'd fully join in. If you don't agree, I'll have no choice but to report everything back to father. Simple as that. <laughs> You're not giving us much wiggle room here, Lynette. Well, I guess we're all in this together then. After we talk to Claire V, we'll figure out our next move. There's no time to lose. Let's go. <laughs> I love you see like the different like interactions between uh Linny and Femine, and then Linny and Lynette, with, you know, Linny and Femine, you know, he's trying to be the responsible older brother, you know, trying to be like, I'm going to protect you, we're going to work through this together, you know, a lot of this motivational stuff, whereas, whereas with Lynette, his twin sister, he's kind of like, oh, Lynette, when, when did you get here? <laughs> sort of more, you know, a little bit more playful, and also, exactly, did you not expect Lynette was going to be here the whole time? <laughs> She's super sneaky. I don't know what you guys were, we were expecting. <laughs> all right, the gang's all here. We're gonna figure this out together. Thank you for bringing me this food, you guys. Um, she said she's full, but the food doesn't look like it's even been touched. Well, she's a spirit. She can't actually eat. That's right. Based on what I've been able to observe, it doesn't seem like Clairvy can interact with the physical world at all. Okay, Still, then why do we need to bring her food, food, water, and clothes? She'll always linger around it for a good little while. Maybe, okay. in her mind, she really is eating those things. That Does makes she sense. That she has already passed away? Still the sensation of being able to I've enjoy those things. I tried to ask her, but she didn't answer. My guess is that she's just as confused as we are. Or, maybe she couldn't understand the question at all. Clairvy. If you've got some time, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Sure. Oh, another new friend. Hi, I'm Clairvy. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Clairvy, how did you join the House of the Hearth? Huh? Isn't it the same for everybody? The knave brings you here and then you can't leave. It's just that your name, it's not on the roster. And I've never seen you before. The roster? Oh, I get it now. I think there might be some things you don't know about this place. The people in charge, they're not as nice as they look. They say they keep a roster, but it's not complete. There are a lot of people who aren't on it. And never will be. In this house, some people are family, and other people are just test subjects. Those kinds of people aren't ever going to get a place on the roster. Unless it's the roster of people who've been executed. Wait, does, does that mean no. the name... She... 
Is there anyone that can vouch for you? Mm. Perry, she's my best friend. She's the only one I trust in this place. Have either of you heard of that name before? No, I'm guessing they have not. Me neither. Claire V. Perry. Neither of those names are on the roster. But it seems like she's telling the truth. Either that, or this kid's already got a bag of tricks bigger than mine. Hmm. Which would Maybe be saying should something. try a different approach. Claire V, do you have a wish? A wish? It can be anything you want. Just imagine. It's your birthday, you're blowing out the candles, and your wish is... To... to go outside, where the sun can find me. That's... it? Well, that sounds easy enough. Hmm. But what does this say about Darkness her own life as well? Darkness runs deeper than you can imagine. No one can get out alive. I see. And that's why it'd be her greatest wish. What did she mean by that? Things can't be this simple. Okay, time to divide and conquer. Listen up, I've got a plan. I'll try and find a way to use basic illusory magic to take Clairvy outside and bring her somewhere with sunlight. Lynette, try and find the list of executions that Clairvy was talking about and see if her name is on it. Fremine, you stay in Poisson. We can't be the only ones who've had run-ins with Clairvy. I need you to collect intel on everything she's said and done. Without giving away Understood. what we're up to, because it's supposed best. to just stick with our what little group us? here. <laughs> I really appreciate your willingness to help, but this is a family matter. I don't want to drag you in too deep. It's too risky. Probably what will happen is when your father shows up, we're going to be the ones stumbling to try and explain and distract from what the three of you are doing. For a little while. You don't need to do anything except Oh my gosh, that's that's, that's literally what we're going to be doing. Uh-oh. Okay. This is kind of stressful. I mean, the last time, this is not the first time we had to basically distract her. The first time was when she was kind of intimidating Farina, and um, that was something. How should we contact? Well, he'll probably leave a magic card or something. I'll give you a something. magic bird. If father suspects something, oh, all you need to do is release so it. So cute! I love it. And it'll alert me that something's wrong. Of course, that's only as a last resort. If father doesn't seem to notice us, there's no need to make contact. We'll reconvene here tonight after all said and done. If the worst case scenario happens and we're discovered, just tell father everything. We're not going to let our guests get punished for our own actions. That's where we draw the line. Okay. Be careful, you Lenny too. and Lena and Fremini. Okay, this is where we part. Father should be at the beach nearby. Okay. I really hope this goes well. No, it has to go well. That's the only way this can get resolved. Something tells me this is not gonna go well. <laughs> I'm just saying. Claire V, I'd like to take you somewhere. Is that okay with you? <laughs> sure, where are we going? I'm sure Lynette and Fremine are somewhere, but I think we should probably make haste. Um, because, uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I can already see kind of the, that this is probably not going to go as well as, as Linny has planned. Let, let's just say, what's the cemetery? Oh, how lovely to see both of you again. I 
hope we're not intruding on any important conversation. <laughs> and child. Hey! It's our best buddy child. How are you doing? You got your vision back. It's That's you great. She brought it back to you in good you condition. <laughs> He's probably not fully recovered. He was trapped fighting that whale sea. for a very, very, very After long I time. Up, I realized I was being taken back to Snezhnaya. And well, I couldn't have that now, could I? Not when I've still got unfinished business here in Fontaine. So I mustered up all my strength and made the journey back on my own. What sort of unfinished okay. business are we talking here? We very rarely get to see to the skirt. Tui Harbingers My interact master. like this. I really wanted to meet up with her, but by the time I got back, she had already left. I still have oh, so I'm many sure she'll contact you soon enough. Without any other she just says something to Nivella about if she gets any more information, she will call she upon her disciple to get him to deliver it to him, so I'm sure you'll hear from oh, her soon enough. Okay, so have you found any clues? I can't believe we didn't get any child and Skirk no. interaction, well, really, except for the fact that she threw him into the boil. Of <laughs> Certain existences can still manage to escape our purview. Yeah. Basically, unless Master feels there's a need to meet with me, she's not going to be found. But that problem well, has an hopefully easy fix. that changes at some point. I just need to become stronger, and then... <laughs> After you I rested, <laughs> then you can go all out with your training again. The worst of it is over. That's good to hear, though. That's good to hear. It's all thanks to that one kid from the House of the Hearth. Elwar, I think her name was. She gave me a bunch of random potions to drink. They didn't go down easy, let me tell you. <laughs> Pain and chills all over. But they really did help speed up my recovery. And well, that's good, medicines it, it like is. Really medicines seem to work. <laughs> The old man the medicine doesn't taste good, that me. either means you're getting me way better or way worse. <laughs> Project Stuja? Yeah, okay, that's what the is one. Project Stuja? Uh, I heard Regrater's involved too. I'm not looking forward to having to listen to all his monologuing, that's for sure. Hey, maybe you could think of a way for me to stay in Fontaine for a little longer. Helping Linny and the others brush up on their fighting skills would be far more interesting. If you and I could spar, that would be even better. I've been waiting for a chance to see you go all out. And what a sweet little daydream that is. But I well, also I'm, have I'm, a I'm not sure you're exactly you I'll know, be on her level, but as well. I, I, the fight would make you get stronger, I'm sure. <laughs> step outside the homeland, being called on to return to Snezhnaya by such illustrious dignitaries. What a great honor. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> One I could do without, I'd say. Small difference of opinion. <laughs> uh, is it just Paimon? Or does it kind of seem like they're... Just casually trash-talking their colleagues behind their backs. <laughs> Which is why these little interactions are so funny. So, dear guests of the House of the Hearth, to what do I owe the visit? Um, oh, well, we're, just we're just... Chilling. Um, Wanted to learn a bit more about you. Yeah, we've been hearing and learning... From all the members of the House of the Hearth, uh, all of them, every single one, and uh, because of that, now we want to learn a little bit about, you know, their their father. Right. We're super close to Linny and the others, but we still don't know much about you. Is that so? Introductions have already been made, have they not? Oh, uh, well, you see. There's only so much you can learn about someone from a short introduction. At least tell us something a little extra, like... Why do you call yourself father? Huh, good question. I'd also like to know. Okay, okay, so we're not the, the only ones who are curious. Me That's our a intelligence work has been mm, quite successful. Good sign. Telling you the answer to that question would only serve to undermine that success. And we can't have that, now can we? Spoken like a true diplomat. <laughs> that was some expert sidestepping right there. Well, if there's That's nothing a, else, we will I find out in due time, time kind of answer. I still have a small matter to resolve at home. Oh shoot. Okay, we gotta distract her from from going back home. No matter at all costs. If the knave leaves right now, she's sure to run into Linny and Clervy. Should I release the bird Linny gave us? No, we should try talking to her about something first. Um, okay. 
We, we sound like reporters right now, um, Ether, but let's go for it. About the House of the Hearth, what does the organization mean to you? That absolutely sounds like we're journalists, but let's <laughs> share. Yes. I'd also like to hear the answer to this. I've met some thanks, thanks for, thanks for backing like us up. <laughs> they actually reminded me of Tonya and Tusser. Which, by the way, if you ever betray them, I'm just letting you know, I won't let you off easy. And why would good to I know, betray good to know. them? Well, you've already betrayed the House of the Hearth once, haven't you? At least, that's what I heard. Ooh, ooh gossip. Hmm. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. You should probably the um, I mean. back off a little before we all get in trouble. The knave betrayed the House of the Hearth. So does that mean what Clairvy said was true? Does a knave really treat her children like test subjects? Oh, wait, did you really do something bad to those kids? Never well, let's not be done. presumptuous. <laughs> mighty rooster had to say. Care There's to one rank below her. Ah, well, what kind of gossip did he have to say about her? About you taking out many other members of the House of the Hearth, and even going so far to attack your own family. Hmm. I see. Oh, based on your reaction, I'm guessing it's all a bunch of lies. Hardly. I don't appreciate his particular turns of phrase. But I suppose he didn't say anything untrue. Although, it would be more accurate to say that there is a certain level of prejudice involved. But I don't intend to clear that up just yet. Prejudice has a funny way of concealing the real truth behind certain things. An attribute that I find to be quite advantageous. Call yourself a Fontanian, for example, and people will assume all sorts of things, when the real truth is that this is simply the land where I was raised. Huh? You're not actually from Fontaine? But then why did you try to help out with the prophecy and everything? I was trying to protect the children born in Fontaine. Claiming that I myself was a Fontanian simply made it easier to operate. People would hardly suspect a fellow Fontanian of having any ulterior motives. Who wouldn't want to save their homeland after all? The primordial sea okay. wouldn't have any effect on me, but it would have caused great harm to the House of the Hearth. Well, you wanted extra information, didn't you? There you okay. go. Okay, so we did get some intel, but unfortunately we're not doing a very good job distracting her for very long. So much for learning anything else about her betrayal. She probably only revealed that other secret in order to change the subject. It seems like she's trying to avoid talking about her so, past. you stayed in Fontaine for the kids. I guess I was wrong to believe you'd betray them. Apologies. Looks like I yeah. was holding on to some prejudices myself. Good. Like I said, I like it when others have misconceptions of me. Actually, while I, I, I was can recuperating tell. at the House of the Hearth, there was something else that really caught my attention. Oh no. I heard that members always resolve disputes and arguments with a friendly spark. Okay. I thought he was going to talk about Clervy. <laughs> Seems pretty cool if you ask me would also give them plenty of opportunities to hone their skills. Well, that's only a recent development. In the past, such spars weren't nearly so... friendly. The losing party would lose everything, including their life. They were that high stakes? <laughs> well, at least that's not a thing okay. anymore. <laughs> well, the current atmosphere's not half bad. I'm a bit jealous, actually. You've got so many family members around you, and you even get to live with them. Having a lot of family around means dealing with a considerable amount of bickering and scheming. Once Tonya and Tusser enter their rebellious phase, I'm sure you'll understand. Just imagine. Tusser becomes obsessed with plucking out strands from the rooster's mustache, <laughs> where Tonya <laughs> decides to dye her hair 42 different colors. Okay, okay. I get the <laughs> This game is gonna go on so long. These, these kids are gonna be grown up by the time we meet them. <laughs> well, well two you look at the time. Well, he'll be like a teenager. <laughs> Traveler, Paimon. I'm not sure if time passes in next. real next time, time run into each other, that is. We should definitely try and find some time to spar. <laughs> um, but not again, today. <laughs> maybe this is a conversation we can have when you look less. But yes, 
We're all right, all right. always well, down thanks for to everything help on the out. No thanks necessary. You also played a part in obtaining the Gnosis. I would say we can call ourselves even. In fact, he played no I small like part. And neither did you, I guess. Well, so. I'm off. <laughs> See you all some other time. So, praise all around here. Um, but we should probably get going too. <laughs> Do you want to head back with us? That conversation seemed a lot less intense than I think it would have been if Child Tartaglia was not there just lightening the mood by just being there because otherwise that would have been pretty scary if he hadn't you know started to interject and stuff <laughs> i mean part of the story quest is if you've already seen that animated short you kind of already have ideas of where the story is leading but it doesn't make it any less sad where you think it's going oh, you want me or to leave what sort of directions it could head in um, when you were about to leave just now. I'm rather enjoying the evening breeze. If you don't mind, I think I'll stick around for a bit. I have some things to think about. Apologies for not attending to you like a proper host. Please forgive this slight. I do hope you'll have a pleasant stay. We have. We have. It's been good. We managed to keep her distracted until nightfall. Good thing Child was there to keep the conversation going. You don't think she suspected anything, do you? I mean, <laughs> oh, I wonder if Liddy ran into any issues. Let's who knows? And see how everything went. The whole, the whole thing about her, of course, is that she makes herself very difficult to read. Oh, you decided to stay a little longer. Oh, let's take in the ocean view together then. Okay. Let's do that. Not that she would have answered this question, but does her power come more from her vision, her delusion, or something else? <laughs> she has a pyro delusion too, right? I think in the boss footage they showed, she had a pyro delusion in addition to her pyro vision. After all, there's, I mean, she seems to have other powers beyond the those so um but i once again i don't think there's would have been any point to asking that because i don't think i don't think she would have answered and i think that's a question that will 100 percent answer itself in due time and if we just let things happen as they are happening i mean what i mean is like the, like the whole thing about did she betray the House of the Hearth? If so, there are... Not everything is as it seems, I think. <laughs> okay, tell me how your guys' sides of the plan worked, because I'm not sure how it, if we helped at all. <laughs> well, long story short, we ran into a small issue. Claire V can't go into the sunlight. Okay, what do you, like, literally? Everything was fine at first. She followed me up to the surface just like I told her. But as I led her out of the shadows and into the sunlight, she vanished. I turned oh. around and there she was, standing at the edge of the shadows, silently watching me. And smiling. Huh, maybe she's afraid of sunlight, or... No, it wouldn't be her wish if that were the case. Hmm. Well, we could always try pushing her into it. But that doesn't sound very nice. <laughs> Not sure pushing works in a non-corporeal being. Oh, true. I've pretty much tried it all already. Nothing worked. Eventually, the sun went down, so all I could do was bring her back here. But at least she was willing to How follow did it go you with you, all Lynette? up there. Good. I've got the list. It's right here. Really? Well, what are we waiting for? Let's take a look! Well, that was quite fast for you to dig up. 
Considering we didn't even know it existed. Oh, that's a lot of pages. Oh, it's gonna take forever to get through it all. We can each take a section. Here. I mean, the biggest thing is when did these executions start? And when did they end? Yikes, that or rare guy has a huge scar on his face. He's kind of giving pipe on the creeps. Ah, I've met him before. The scar is from an injury he received during a mission. <laughs> I still remember him joking with me about it. He said any future lover would take one look at him and then lose all interest. Did he say anything else? Is he actually dead? Well, I asked dead? if there was someone he was interested in. He said no, and that's where our conversation ended. Or is this... It was only later that I learned he really did have someone he liked. He risked everything to escape so he could be with her, but... It didn't work. One day, Father asked to see him. And, well... I never oh. saw him again after that. Okay. Wait, so that means... The knave, she... It may seem cruel, but it's just one of the rules of the house. Betrayal is not to be taken lightly. We know too many secrets to come and go as we please. So, if you do try to leave, you pay with your life. A solemn atmosphere descends over the group as you look at the list of names. Not here, huh? Something about well, Claire that's V. Well, <laughs> not too surprising. It doesn't seem like this list is complete. It only contains records dating back around five years. Let's shift our attention then. Fremene, were you able to find anything out? I mean, from their perspective, Fremine, though, Clarvy doesn't look like she's that old. Uh, so I'm sorry, I was thinking. Kind about of suspicious something. to them if she wasn't in the records I in the past five years. I managed to talk to quite a few people. But, but then I again, if she's a spirit, but then she that could have died at any time, which is, I think. The key point to this story Strange. here. Strange. Strange? Yeah. Strange I how? Mean, I know there have been arguments in the past. Times when people haven't gotten along. Chaplo and Filial are a good example of that. Oh, those are two of the people that we met while delivering supplies. Paimon can see how they might not get along. They had very different vibes and their, um, interests. Seem to be pretty different as well. That's yeah. to be expected, actually. Father brought us all here, shared her knowledge with us, taught us how to fight. That's one thing we all share. But that's also where the similarities end. Not all of us feel the same desire to stay here. I know we've as members we've of the met House of lots the Hearth, of we're House also of the Hearth considered part of the Fatui. Basically defected. And to a lot of people, that's an identity they never asked for. Certain members get older and realize they want something else for themselves. But considering the rules of the house, most people would never say that out loud. People like Chaplot and Foltz are loyal to Father and her vision. They're proud to be part of the Fatui. Filial and Nantoy, on the other hand, well, they aren't quite as enthusiastic. These kinds of conflicts have always been there. It's not like Father is in the dark about any of this. Well, that's true. But it just feels like things have gotten worse lately. Filial and the others... It seemed like they were meeting in secret to talk about something. I can't say for sure. Interesting. But I think they've met Claire V. Interesting. You think she's been inciting them to act out? No, not exactly. But I wouldn't be surprised if she said something to them about the darkness in the house and how deep it runs. Which is probably She's something that would align with their own perspectives. Experiments being run on children. People being used as pawns on the battlefield without so much as the strength to survive. And they just yeah. believed all that? Without any evidence? Clarivy's words probably gave them the excuse they were looking for. Whether they actually believe them to be true is secondary. Which is a common theme around here. Project Stuja, isn't it? 
Okay, can you explain explain Project Stusha to me? Is, you mean, only as much as you were able to. I'm not sure of the details either. Okay. I only know what Fair enough. Has told us, which is that it's something the rooster and Regrader have been working on together. Apparently, it has to do with the Fatui's strategic plan for the future. Okay. Because the House of the Hearth was so successful in obtaining the Gnosis, we now have the honor of playing a key role in Project Stusia. And by but successful, I mean, the villa just gave it to you guys, just but another way of sure. <laughs> To us, the whole thing is an inconvenience. Father thinks so too, but she's in no position to refuse. Their plan isn't exactly unreasonable, and they've been funneling the house a lot of funding. It's just because they're the, the funding finance the guys, right? <laughs> the Participating in the plan, it's an honor in name only. What they're really trying to do is subdue us. The existence of an intelligence organization outside their control makes them feel uneasy. Hmm. Looks like the Fatui are plotting something big, but given how little Linny and the others seem to know about it, I probably won't be able to learn much. I should keep a sharp eye out during the future dealings of the Fatui to see what I can learn. Okay, Interesting. Okay. I guess we're going to be keeping an, out, an eye out for Fatui this stuff. <laughs> you were talking about earlier. Behemoth doesn't get the connection. External pressure has a way of exacerbating internal strife. They don't Can't want to get involved with either. these People schemes. They don't really want to be here in the first and place. That fear is often the impetus <laughs> for a lot of stupid decisions. I thought resolving the Clairvy situation would make everything go back to normal. But it looks like things are more complicated than I thought. If we leave Filiol and the others to their own devices, sooner or later, Father will be forced to take action. We can only focus on one situation at a time, brother. You're right. Even if we confront Filial and the others, it won't do any good. It might even make matters worse. We should focus on Clairvy for now. Well, it's getting late. We should head back and get some rest. We'll try again first thing tomorrow. Lynette, you stick with me this time. Fremenay, keep a close eye on Filial and the others. Make sure they don't do anything they'll regret. They're so organized. Good work today, everyone. It shows how many have missions and how many I'll things they've tomorrow. had to survive through together. They work together just so seamlessly, but that just shows you know, that they're used to this by now. Your mind races with all sorts of thoughts. You try, you can't fall asleep. Okay, well, not being able to fall asleep, not always the uh, the, the best thing in this game. Hey, you don't think the knave will be too angry with Linny and everyone if she finds I don't know, Kylan. It sounds like she kind of murdered somebody for betrayal, so it's uh, not out of the realm of possibility, and we should uh, keep our eyes out for Um. You can just hide behind me. Don't worry. I think we're going to be okay. But we got to look out for our friends here. <sighs> Trust is ever traveling. Okay, Clarvy. <gasps> what is happening? Look. Look over there. Clarvy, what's she doing oh, over there? Let's catch up with her before anyone sees. <laughs> She's probably going to go meet with the the group of people from I said probably have already seen her. I mean, the, the thing is, you know, if she's a spirit of some sort, and she is, appears where House of the Hearth members are, I mean, that is a sign that, you know, home is where your family is. Um, but as for how, what their perception of family is like, it seems to be different for, between, you know, from person to person in the house. Big old complicated family oh, where issues. Is she going? Oh, if someone sees her, we're toast. Well, maybe she's trying to go outside now because there's no sunlight out. That, that sounds like a promising theory as to what is happening. Oh, look! She stopped! It just seems to be exactly what she's up to.
Clearly. Shh. I opened Sorry. the window Shh. while no one was looking. Look how pretty the outside is. Window? There's nothing if here. Only I could have more than this. I mean, I think you, you do deserve more than this, but silly, huh? no, it's. I don't think it's silly. resisting. It's better to dream of what I could have than try to make it a reality, right? Please help us get on the same page here, Cleary. We well, need you to tell us what you know. know. If you have you dreams, of course, it's still sure. your human desire to follow them. Uh, well, after you hear all this, I think you might regret okay. that decision. Everyone in this might. family is nothing more than a tool, something to be used and exploited. We're all expendable, including me. As long as you're useful, you get to stick around, lose your value, and you're handed over to the doctor, experimented on. Oh my gosh, and we and don't like the doctor. Worse than death. I've seen it happen again and again, and I've had enough. You're saying the knave did all that? It's just, that doesn't seem like something she would do. She's scary and all, but it seems like even she has lines she wouldn't cross. Huh. I knew you wouldn't mom, believe me. We're not talking about Everyone the same person she's a good here. Person. They all think of her like a real mother. Mother? But she I'm doesn't not talking about that the title. same person here. She's disgraced it and tarnished it. And if I had things my way, I'd never see her again. If only Perry were here, she'd understand. Harry, there's that name again. Also, Paimon's getting a strange feeling. It almost feels like she's not really here with us. Paimon can't tell if she's actually talking to us or if she's mistaken us for someone else. It's like she's... Yeah, it's like she's not present with us. She's she's trapped in a different reality kind mm. of thing. Well, in or any so case, to speak. It seems like she really needs someone to talk to. We should keep her company for a little longer. She looks so young. But it seems like she's been through a lot. Uh, it's getting windy. I should close the window. Ooh, look at the moon. Isn't it pretty? Hey, wanna hear a secret? I heard that if you look up at the night sky in Shnezhnaya, you can see the aurora. It's supposed to be super pretty. Even prettier than the moon tonight. I'd love to see Harry it. Harry and I promised each other that once we're older, we're gonna go see it together. But I can't find her. I'm worried she's also been... No, that wouldn't happen to her. She's special. Mother likes her a lot. Yeah? We should really go talk to Mother, but we just fought. She doesn't want to see me, and I'm too scared to face her. What should I do? Yeah, she's definitely not talking about recent events <laughs> I know the moon is beautiful oh, oh that's a bird I was like what is that it's a bird after some time Clary seems to come back to herself she gives a weak <sighs> smile and leaves on her own my mom really doesn't understand what's going on with her well let's head back we've got an early morning tomorrow I think we have some important information here upon one which is that she's not really she's not really talking about right now all it's right. pretty Looks obvious. Like we're all here. Let's go ahead with the plan. Before we do that, I have a question. And please tell me it's the right question, Ether. Was there another knave before the current knave? Oh. What is it? Have the knave and oh, okay, that too. Have the knave and the doctor ever worked together? Oh my gosh, I can't wait for us to do things to Dottori. After. After everything he did to Wanderer, which was pretty awful. After everything he did to Kale, which was really awful. All the people he was experimented on in that um, laboratory in Sumeru. 
And now it seems that that number also included a lot of um, children from the House of the Hearth too. Um, I think this guy is certainly racking up the, I don't know how to make you pay. <laughs> for, how, how do I make you pay for all of this sort of thing? Well, I guess Nahida murdered him multiple times over, so to, so to speak. Um, and yet somehow that doesn't even feel like justice for the things he's done to a lot of people. Like that, that's not, you know what? Let's just see where this goes. You ask that. We kind of ran into Clairview last night, and that's what she told us. We met the doctor back in Sumeru. He's super dangerous, and he's done all sorts of bad he's things. Not the nicest it's example of somebody the from the Fatui. But I don't think Father would work with him. We're not really on the same side, so there's not a lot of trust between them. That doesn't exactly set the stage for a successful partnership. I did hear, though, that when Father first became a Harbinger, the Doctor offered to work with the House of the Hearth. Father rejected most of his proposals, except for one. It had to do with some sort of secret experiment. Secret experiment? Could that be what Clairvy was talking about? Mm, I don't think it so. It does not sound like it. You I guys don't are know missing any details the, about the, the larger question itself, here. <laughs> but I do know it's an entirely independent operation. The doctor only proposed a direction for the research. That was the extent of his involvement. I still don't think that counts as work. The doctor is probably the most the evil character the in the entirety of Genshin Impact. Complete records are kept like just straight up malicious with that no reason to be. be. Case with the situation Clairvy referred to. And the hurt he's. Really don't agree with some of the Fatui's The methods. amount of damage and, and hurt. Asking you to. And ruining but of people's I lives. Am he is. To trust us on this. Been responsible we for in the story already, and we're not even through the entire story. There are certain lines we're not willing to cross. <laughs> Is um, almost right, unbearable. That's good to hear, at least. Yeah. Clarify seems it's to just like Paimon said. Meeting Arlequino now. If that turned out to be true, Paimon doesn't know the, how we. She's absolutely right that this, you know, lines that, it's just that she wouldn't. Doesn't seem like Clarify is She wouldn't cross. Either. The easiest thing to do would be just ask the name directly, but. Hyman doesn't think she'd tell us. I imagine, I imagine, though, even if we do ask, was there a previous knave? These three are not going to know, because that sounds like the sort of thing that would be kept secret. The, the events of that animated short are the kinds of things that would be kept secret. Let's focus on the plan Father for now. Father didn't come back last night. She's probably still near the shore. We'll be counting on you to distract her. Lynette, you're with me. Fremenet, you know what to do. Be on your guard, everyone. All right, let's get to it. Birds in a cage. Where are we going today? Let's try somewhere further away this time. Go to the seaside to look for the knave. Really? She's been standing there for the last, like, what, 12 hours? 18 hours? It was, it's morning now. Okay, not that long. Yeah, 12 hours? <laughs> does, does she sleep? Maybe she doesn't. I mean, that's the whole thing about, I don't know what her powers are, just like, does she just does she literally not sleep? Because that's sort of the implication of her staying here the whole night. Not running into us or Clervy in the middle of the night or anything like that. Hello. Ah, oh, it's you two again. I must say, you look a bit pale. Did you have trouble sleeping last night? Uh a little. Perhaps if yeah. you had less on your mind, you'd be able to absolve yourself of such troubles. So what are you planning to do now? Catch up on some sleep? Or should I give you some time to rack your brain for a topic to discuss before I ask any questions? Although I must profess to being curious. Without child here, how do you plan on distracting me? 
Something tells me we, we were never distracting her in, in the first place. Us? Distract you? <laughs> how absurd would that be? How, how could we possibly distract you from, from, from anything? The answer is we probably can't. <laughs> no matter. If you don't have any other plans, why don't you accompany me somewhere? Don't worry. I'll be sure to steer clear of any scheming children. Oh, uh, okay. The ocean breeze is sure nice today. <laughs> look, I mean, is it? I mean, look, I like I said, it's, it seems very, very implausible that people like us would be successful in distracting her, unless she was allowing us to do that, which means we were never distracting her in the first place. <laughs> do you, so you know everything. Children then. Children always think they can hide things from the grown-ups, but nothing gets past me. Least of all, a little scheming. I think I'll let them have at it for a little longer. I can be very patient. Well, okay. I'll leave you to think things over. If you're so inclined, meet me outside the Palais Mermonia. Palais Mermonia? That's uh, quite a walk from here. Do told. <laughs> so I do hope you decide to tag along. If only for your friends' sakes. We'll do it. Yeah, we're, we're coming. Don't worry. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna go to Palais Marmonia, Paimon. That's exactly what she just said for us to do. She was threatening us just now. We should release the pigeon that Lenny gave us. Oh, she probably knows about that too. <laughs> but at least we've communicated it to Lenny. We should probably head to Nothing gets past the knave. Don't show up. Based on what the knave was saying just now, it sure didn't seem like it'd be anything good. We really don't have any other options. Guess all we can do is take it one step okay, at a time. Okay, then we probably shouldn't keep her waiting. It seems like Linny and the others are on thin ice, so let's do our best to not get them in any more trouble. Let's not get them any any more trouble. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it'll be fine, right? It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> See, I still have some time before my meeting. We might as well enjoy some pleasant conversation while we wait. <laughs> pleasant conversation? To see you get along yeah, oh, yeah, what do you, what do you want to talk about? Is necessary for a child's development. You're not okay. planning on doing That's anything good. to them, are you? I assume you're referring to Lenny, Lynette, and Fremine. Uh, Although, I mean, there's that situation with Filial and Nentoy as well. Hmm. It appears quite a few people have been acting. <laughs> well, maybe they're all just in their rebellious no teenager matter. faces, right? <laughs> all those who betray the house meet the same fate. There are no exceptions. Right? Okay. Does that mean you're um, going to kill them? Oh, are you here to beg for their lives? I'm sorry to disappoint, but the rules of the house change for no one. In my organization, everyone is responsible for their own actions. Don't you care about them at all? They really respect you. They even call you father. You must feel something for them. Paimon, I think I think right now in the set of conversation Any less is more. Any in which feelings <laughs> come before principles is one destined for ruin. The House of the Hearth is hardly an exception. You could say our principles are more stringent than most. Perhaps I can offer you this consolation at least. As our guests, you two will not be held accountable along with them. I feel like we've we've really roped ourselves into quite a predicament this time. There's really no other way to solve the issue. I would issue. imagine Linny, Lynette, and Fremine will be able to keep their lives. As for Filial, Nantoy, and the others, I'm afraid there's little I can do. They can try to escape, but once you know our secrets, there's no getting out alive. We probably shouldn't tell her about the shy but, meeting that we helped escape. Ah, oh, you seem concerned. Out of consideration for my guests, I suppose I could turn a blind eye for a little longer. If Linny and the others managed yeah, to dispose well, of Claire V in the It meantime, probably would have been a better idea to not to do something to stop your guests from getting so involved if you didn't want us to be concerned. <laughs> if their efforts are unsuccessful, on the other hand, all will be held accountable. And the punishment will be severe. Okay, we'll hold you to it. Of course. Oh, and here. I believe this belongs to you. 
Do try and yeah. do better <laughs> next time. It takes a Sorry. considerable amount of time to train a bird like this. It would be such a pity if you were to lose it permanently. Okay. What is she doing to make this like cage here? Because it's super cool. But what is she doing to do this? And also, like I said, you know, it's, it's nothing gets past her. Where did you get that? Yeah, this well, bird has I'm nothing to do with, to with us. Yeah, <laughs> it is just a little bird you that here is because I have business um, very smart. Mermonia. It has nothing to do with you, but I think it would be prudent for you to stick by my side for the time being. There will always be time later to run off and tell Linny what you've learned. Well, <laughs> you're, go. you're funny. Like we <laughs> if you think we're gonna go tell Linny every everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are. <laughs> Probably it's the whole thing about you know. If you have a third party, it's gonna be a lot less intense. Um, the what the meeting, right? I mean, people will be in their best behavior. Uh, hello, Nevillette. How are you? How are you doing on this fine and wonderful sunny day with no rain clouds in it? It's been a while, Monsieur Nervalette. I must say, I wasn't expecting my meeting request to be approved quite so quickly. The Palais Mermonia Especially since he's like working double time now. Running the courts right, and the entire the country. Yourself should be afforded <laughs> the proper level of respect. Although, if I may speak plainly, I must confess that I did not anticipate we would have the occasion to meet again after presenting you with the Gnosis. I see you brought the Traveler and Paimon with you as well. If I may inquire as to the purpose of your visit. I'll be departing Fontaine shortly. There is, however, an outstanding matter that I would like to see resolved before I go. It requires a rather lengthy explanation, I'm afraid. So I took the liberty of explaining everything in this proposal. Please review it at your leisure, Monsieur Nevelette. Okay. I guess we just chill here. As we do, drink water. Oh, sorry, tea. We have actually tea this time. We're not just drinking water. Water is good too. Water is healthy. <laughs> I understand your request. However, at the risk of causing offense, I must admit that I failed to see why you would wish for such a thing. I heard you have a certain fondness for water tasting, Monsieur Nervalette. So allow me to use water as an analogy. A okay. family is like a large body of water with countless rivers flowing in and out. As someone who watches over this system, I would hope that each river that flows from the source will eventually reach the ocean. Of course, objectively speaking, I know this is impossible. Most of the rivers will dry up along the way, disappearing into the ground and leaving nothing but a barren riverbed behind. Not all rivers are that destined is quite to reach the analogy. The ocean. But I would not see their existence rendered meaningless. I believe the water that flows within them is simply meant for a different destination, like a field in need of irrigation. Or perhaps the glass of a certain water tasting enthusiast. Um, did you get any of that, Traveler? I, I don't follow, because in your analogy, it seems as though you're saying the water that doesn't flow out to the ocean. AKA the water that's not successful needs to find another purpose, such as, well, irrigation and water tasting, but basically not that path, a different path. However, you just finished a conversation with us talking about betrayal and, and paying the price for leaving and all that. And so I'm not quite sure I follow, given our previous conversation, um, what you're actually saying. So. Kind of, and yet, I'm sure this all sounds perfectly reasonable to Nevillette, other than not understanding why, why we're, we're talking Your about this. Your words paint an optimistic picture indeed. 
Allow me to remind you, however, few among us are willing to sip from a glass filled with tainted water. It may have been tainted at one point in time, but not to worry. I'll make sure it's drained of all impurities and returned to its cleanest form. Hmm. I'm still not exactly following. That Doesn't didn't really help. There being a <laughs> transactional aspect to your proposal. Perhaps you could expound on that? If you accept my proposal, Monsieur Nivellet, I will gradually withdraw my forces from Fontaine. And, unless absolutely necessary, I will no longer carry out any special missions within Fontaine. I presume Which I can take your words to mean thing, that right? in the future, cases similar to the Tartuffe assassination will cease to cross my desk? Tartuffe? Ah, that thief who embezzled funds from all those charities, you mean? My deepest condolences to his family, but without any evidence, I cannot imagine how the House of the Hearth might have been involved in his passing. Of course, if you accept my proposal, the guy from from the character teaser, I'm sure it? certain measures could be taken to reduce the frequency of such troubles. You choose your words carefully, indeed. In that case, I am inclined to accept your proposal. My thanks for your generosity, Monsieur. Speaking of the character teaser, well, with that settled, that must have been the I took the, 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 the flower wreath that we saw at one of the graves, the one that she left for I do hope I get the chance that to child. Impressions. Perhaps at our next meeting. Yes. Indeed, I trust you would not overlook your commitment in the meantime. Okay, All I'm right, not sure I quite understand, but I'm glad that Time somehow we managed to help this go through. I hope it's a good thing. <laughs> How's it going, our good friend, Monsieur Nevillette? I believe I've told you before that my emotions easily resonate with those of others. Yet in the few meetings I've had with that harbinger, I haven't been able to sense any aspect of her emotional state. Her mind is like a still body of water. Who knows what darkness lies in its depths? And the lack of ripples on the surface gives nothing away. It's unclear whether this is her natural state of being, or whether it's an incredible strength of will that gives her the ability to master her emotions. Either scenario, however, suggests she is a very dangerous individual. I do not expect an explanation yep, as to why you I two can tell. are in <laughs> Whatever your reasoning, I would only advise you to take caution. Okay, nice, nice to see you again. <laughs> I remember what Skarmush said about her, right? <laughs> she says, a wolf in sheep's clothing. And anyone who's seen her true side has gone poof. Yep, I can definitely see that. <laughs> so, I... Uh what exactly were you talking about back there? Paimon, I kind of get the sense it wasn't our business, but yeah, know, at the same time, I really want to know, too. So, yeah. A large body of water <laughs> and then some kind of irrigation scheme. You really want to know? I would imagine there might be more pressing concerns at the moment. Uh, well, um, I'm not no, really there are, but going okay. I'm just, you know, just, 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 just figuring out this and that and... Paimon recognizes that look. You've got your dicky cap on, don't you, Traveler? The knave seems, may seem relaxed, but she didn't seem to be joking earlier when she said those who betrayed the organization must pay with their lives. I think she's serious about punishing those kids. How should we stop her? No, there's something else we should figure out first. While we were talking in front of the Palais Marmonia, she mentioned Clarvi's name. Does this mean she knew where Clarivy was his entire time? Maybe she even anticipated how Linny and the others were going to act. A hundred percent, yes. Okay, who are you? You have a big scar on your face. Oh, shoot. Are you all right? Are you the guy that disappeared? Oh, jeez. I'm so sorry. I was so focused on selling these papers, I wasn't looking where I was going. My well, bad. let me make it up to you at least. Here. Take this paper. On the house. He looks kind of familiar for some reason. Is he the guy who disappeared? Did he not actually die? Oh, you don't have to give us anything. 
Please, I want to. It's not like I'm short on supply. All the extras will be useless come tomorrow anyway. If he didn't actually die, then, um, you know. It might mean actually that nobody's at risk of actually dying here. <laughs> I mean, that's exactly what I was saying with like, you know, if the water doesn't flow out to the ocean, but it becomes irrigation or whatever else she was saying, all these different other forms where water can go. Is she suggesting that there's some sort of arrangement to actually let these people go and leave the house? Albeit probably keeping tabs on them so they don't spill any secrets, but... Okay, shouldn't read into it that much when we only have a very, very, very vague analogy to go on, but wait, uh, let's see where this That's is going. my fault, really. I was just trying to bring home some extra mora for the family, but I bit off more than I can chew. I haven't had many takers today, so I'm still swimming in papers. What's going on here? Uh, uh, nothing. nothing. I just ran into your friend here on accident. I should probably get going, actually, so... Hold on. Um, of course, I'm happy to compensate you with Mora. It's just, I don't have any on me at the moment. I'll take three papers. Here, your payment. Oh, thank you for your patronage. May the Archons bless you with good fortune. If only I had the chance to run into such generous customers every day. <laughs> I should probably just take on a smaller inventory though, right? I'm getting married soon, so sometimes it's hard to not get ahead of myself. Anyway, I should head out. Goodbye! Uh, bye! Well, now that my affairs are settled, we should take the boat back to Poisson. We've even acquired some light reading to enjoy along the way. Okay. Actually... Why don't we uh, stick around for a little longer? Uh, Paimon just realized how hungry she is. She can't head back to Poisson on an empty stomach. Paimon, there's food in Poisson. We, I, I don't think that this will have made any progress. It what appears we you do? two are under the impression that delaying our return will somehow alter the situation in your favor. <laughs> to ruin your yeah, Paimon, why are we still trying to trick her? Me. She knows everything. That being said. I could be persuaded to give Linny some extra time. I just have one condition. If you agree to my request, I'll even answer some of your questions. You're quite curious about Claire V, are you not? And my relationship yeah. to her. Wait, yeah. why are you being so generous all of a sudden? Yeah, you're being very generous all of a sudden. Bad, and this you? is information we thought we'd have to you fight really hard for. Yourself. You don't have the talent for bad things. Okay, well, that's somehow a relief and doesn't feel that great at the same time. <laughs> is that both sides receive something they want. Demands and threats only get you so far. Okay, your condition. Wonderful. Let's hear it. Here it is. When the time comes, make the choice that you deem most appropriate in the situation and lend your help to the House of the Hearth. Okay. Sounds normal enough, but what do you mean, when the time comes? When is that supposed to be? That is for you it's to pretty decide. soon. <laughs> okay. Okay, we'll accept then your condition. We have a deal. Follow me. Birds in a cage. Why did we slide forward just now? <laughs> to the nameless ruins. Oh no. Someone pointed out that this this thing here is where the, the fight takes place in the animated short. And it's so far away from any teleport too, so we have to walk all the way here. I was wondering what that big Colosseum over there was for. But of course, but of course, something's gonna go there at some point. <sighs> okay. This is quite a ways away to walk, but you know, once we get a teleport over there, it'll be not as bad. <laughs> okay, why is there? Why does it jut out like this? 
I know it's because this is the border between the Court of Fontaine region and the Liffey region, but I mean, I, all I have to do is just go this way. <laughs> and it just doesn't, it just seems so strange. Okay. What is this place? Somewhere long forgotten by everyone. It used to be a grand building. Now it's nothing more than a pile of rubble. No one comes here anymore. Oh, that's a lovely location. Nor does anyone care about what once happened here. Although, this place does have something to do with the story I'm about to tell you. Now, before you tell us anything, this whole thing about, you know, no betrayals and people can't leave the house of the hearth because it's considered a betrayal and because they have information about the house that they cannot be going around sharing with others. If you tell us really sensitive information, do we become included in this as well? <laughs> it was before I became a harbinger, and before Linny and the others joined the House of the Hearth. Due to certain events, I first killed Clairvy and then her mother. And this is where it all happened. You were the one that killed Clairvy? Patience Hi. now. Allow me to explain Clairvy's side of the story first. I'll start from the beginning. And why did she come back as a, as a ghost? Clairvy was six years old when she was brought by her mother, Crucibina, to live in the House of the Hearth. From the outside, it seemed like a fairy tale. A thriving family made up of kind adults and friendly children. Crucibina was the knave at that time, and the House of the Hearth was under her control. She was Clairvy's mother by blood. But she was also the mother to all the children in the house. Clairvy was happy here for a time. But she quickly realized that being part of this family wasn't a fairy tale at all. It was a kind of purgatory. Purgatory? purgatory. Exactly. The House of the Hearth takes in war orphans from all over to that. But as for how to raise them. That depends entirely on the person in charge. Crucibina came up with a novel idea. She would teach the children to fight, force them to duel each other, and then crown as the king of the house the child who proved themselves most worthy of inheriting her title. It's difficult to estimate the number of children who died or were maimed in the process. There's little I can say about the ones who died ones that emerged with permanent injuries on the other hand well they still served a purpose they would the be doctor. handed over to the doctor to be yeah. experimented on or sent away on dangerous missions nothing more than tools to be used and then discarded so those were the experiments Clairvy was talking about but what actually happened to her you said that Clairvy was Crucifina's daughter so if Clairvy tried to convince her to stop what she was doing, Crucibina probably would have listened, right? Doesn't sound like this was somebody Despite who could be being reasoned Clairvy's with. mother, Crucibina cared little for her daughter. She forced Clairvy to join the House of the Hearth only as a means to demonstrate her own impartiality as a mother. To prove that she treated all her children equally. Clairvy did try to convince her mother to change her ways, but it was to no avail. After her efforts failed, the only other option was to rise up and try to fight back. Unfortunately, the other children had already been thoroughly indoctrinated into the illusion of happiness Crucibina had created. Of course, there was one exception. Someone Clairvy's age, who knew the truth about the House of the Hearth. Her name was Pere Ware. Hey, The friend that Clairvy mentioned? Friend, huh? I suppose we can call her that for now. Clairvy was a cheerful and passionate person with a tenacious spirit. Peruware, on the other hand, was rather cold-blooded. Her cold-blooded nature allowed her to see through Crucibina's facade. Yet, it was also this cold-bloodedness that prevented her from acting against it. 
At least at first. While Clairvy longed for freedom, Peruware was convinced that, amid all the fighting and violence, she would make it until the end. Despite their differences, the two became fast friends, united by their knowledge of the truth. Clairvy told Peruware that she hoped to create a real family, where no one would be killed or sacrificed. There may have been a certain naivete That's to her ideas, thing. but Clairvy proved her determination many times over. She tried countless times to run away, ask for help, or expose the truth. But her efforts only earned her beating after beating. The only thing that kept her going was her strength of will. Even with her body racked with pain, she would still stand on her tiptoes and open the window at night. She and Peruware would look out at the moon together. A fierce longing for freedom shining in her eyes. But one day, that light... simply vanished. Oh no. What happened? Her hopelessness resulted from a culmination of things. Ten years had passed. Ten years worth of failure after failure. She and Peruware weren't children anymore, but finding any chance to escape still seemed as hopeless as ever. It was during this time that Peruware suggested a new plan. If escaping was out of the question, why not take down the very person sitting on top of this throne of lies? Mother herself. Clairvy rejected that proposal. She claimed that as a famous harbinger, Crucibina possessed an unimaginable amount of power. Trying to kill her would have an incredibly low chance of success. Clairvy never gave another reason, but Peruware could see it written all over her face. Clairvy still thought of Crucibina as her mother. Killing her own flesh and blood was a line she couldn't bring herself to cross. If she yeah. couldn't escape and fight back, then only one option remained. Precisely. Death was the only way that she felt she could be free. It happened during a duel. When she arrived at the dueling ring that day, her partner turned out to be none other than Peruere. The very person that had stood by her side all those years. It was a fierce battle. But ultimately, Clairvy decided to let Peruere end her life. From that moment on, Peruware's journey was one written in flames. When the rain finally came and washed it all away, there she stood. The sole victor in Mother's endless game of slaughter. A trail of corpses strewn across her path to success. It was the very result she had predicted ten years prior. Even then, she believed she would make it until the end. She wasn't surprised by the fact that she emerged as Mother's undisputed heir. Rather, her success left her with an inexplicable sense of restlessness. She was unsettled. And there was only one thing that could quell that sensation. Perhaps you two would like to take a guess as to what it was? Finishing the job. Why this, the, uh, the whole video gave me the goosebumps, it gave me chills. <laughs> and well, now you're hearing from the person who survived it all. Who Sabina, you mean? But, but... Correct. This is the place where Peruware killed her best friend. A mere year later, this is also the place where she fought tooth and nail to kill the mother they shared. The moment she acted, any conception of what was right or wrong ceased to matter. It's one of the principles of the house. Only those who survive get to write the rules. Peruware won the battle and became a harbinger herself. After which Her Majesty, the Tsaritsa, bestowed upon her a new name. Arlecchino. So the Perry Clairvy was talking about... It was you all along. Your Perrywear. Arlecchino is just a name you got later. As is the case with all the Harbingers. This was your story just as much as Clairvy's. 
But what happened to Claire V? Why did she come back as a ghost then? Well, we know it probably has something to do with her spirit not being able to rest. I left that name behind long ago. I must say, hearing it now does bring back memories. After I defeated Crucibina, the moniker of Mother died with her. I chose to forego the title she called herself and even chose to give up my own name. I rebuilt the House of the Hearth under a new identity. Not only as Arlecchino, but as father. And that is where the story ends. Any more questions? Yeah, now that you've told us the whole story, are you gonna kill us for, for knowing the story? <laughs> but yeah, it does show, you know, explains a lot about how she, the way she runs the House of the Hearth now, like, she doesn't want a repeat of what she and Clarvy had to go through, the bloodshed and the killing. But even though she is, she's so harsh, there's certain lines she wouldn't cross. It kind of sounds like she's not, like, like, I don't even think she's going to actually kill, kill the, um, the ones who want to leave. I mean, definitely things are a lot worse when all the children were pitted against each other to basically fight to the death for the crown. In, at least in this place, the children are still being nurtured and they have each other as a family and they know that Arlequino is watching over them and that, you know, as long as there's no betrayal, they'll be safe there. That all stems from wanting to make change based on her own experiences. And as she said, having to fight because only those who get to survive get to make the rules. But yeah, the Clarvy we met though, who is she exactly? Yeah. Based on what you just told us, Clarvy wasn't a little kid when she was killed. So the Clarvy we met, was she really a spirit at all? I suppose you could call her an illusion born of flame. Her existence is like ashes to a fire. Something left over in the wake of blaze and ruin. You see, a certain power runs through my veins. It's not unlike a curse. My yeah, flames leave behind power. shadows of anything they consume. Of course, the chances of those shadows morphing into a sentient entity are exceedingly slim. Claire V is a very special case. Claire V died when she was 16 years old, but what emerged from the flames was her six-year-old self. Her appearance wasn't the only thing affected. Most of her memories were lost to the blaze as well. Memory is a mysterious thing indeed. Losing a portion of your memories will alter your sense of self. Lose 10 years worth, however. And it would be like living in the past. Like returning to a version of yourself that... never grew up. No wonder Paimon got such a weird feeling when we were talking to her. Yeah. Perhaps I should put it this way. Claire V is someone trapped in time. It may seem like she exists... Yeah, trapped in time. Time. That's a, that's, she that's, truly that's, lives yeah, in the I'm confines of Trying to think of, of how I describe past. it. Yeah. So if all of that is true, then you must have known about Clairvy for a long time. Indeed. She's a rather volatile and unstable entity. Sometimes she would look after the children. She's even saved some of their lives. But other times, she would hide from me and become obsessed with revealing the truth about the house to anyone who will listen. Which, you know, is part of her own past the capacity to learn or grow. That's what she tried Any to do throughout her life. Information they encounter is and quickly so it seems forgotten that that's something she can't escape doing Your even in death. Your attempts to expose Claire V to sunlight. They failed, yes. The reason is actually quite simple. In Claire V's mind, the house is impossible to escape. And it is this very perception that traps her there. But, no matter. All I have to do is kill her again, and all will be resolved. 
I don't anticipate so much as a single speck of ash will be left behind this time. Wait! I mean, Paimon, in, in this case, way? killing her might be the what so actually she's sets her free. Her Yeah, at least talk to her it's first. Does seem like a good she idea. She broke the rules, and now she must be punished. That goes for Filial and Nentoy as well. She's had quite the effect on them. I hope you understand. The difference between Crucibina and myself lies in our formulation of the rules, not our policy for enforcing them. Upholding the rules without question is a trait we both share. Because that is how a household should be run. <sighs> Yeah, you got something to say either? Is this really what you want to do? Whatever could you mean? <laughs> Don't you... I know, he pulled out words for this. At least? Whether as a killer or as a father, there are two things that must be avoided at all costs. Anger and sorrow. Anger makes you impulsive. Sorrow causes you to waver. Well... It appears it's about time to proceed. Before we arrived, I told some of my well-behaved children to bring our troublemakers here by nightfall. I do believe I've kept my end of the deal. I give your friends quite a bit more time. As you for what happens now, a lot of we'll just have to wait information. and see. Needle, I need that. I don't know for who, but I need it. <sighs> Well, I guess we're gonna have to Here make a choice are, now of how we're going to help out. Ah, oh, you gonna execute him? Seeing something like that would actually be a first for me. Lenny! <laughs> Clarvy? How did you get her here? How did you get her here through all, all this the massive amount of sunlight that you would have had to walk through? <laughs> I'm sorry. I heard about how you helped buy us more time. But I still failed. I couldn't find a way to fulfill her wish. Huh? She's always smiling, too. Are you... Perry? Indeed. It's been a while, Clarvy. Perry! <laughs> Stay right there. I'm sorry to postpone our reunion, but first, I believe certain scores need settling. I don't know what we're Father, supposed to do let here. Let me explain. <laughs> Out of my way. Father! You chose to conceal a threat to the house. And for that, you must be punished. Overall, however, I suppose your wrongdoing is hardly the most egregious of the bunch, so I'll deal with your punishments later. As for right now, the more pressing concerns are the traitors among us. By traitors? Do you mean us? Father, let me explain. We didn't mean to... Fultz, why don't you share what you heard? Yes, Father. Oh my gosh, you asked the kid. The kid's gonna just say everything. Participants, Filial, Nantoy, Sato, Tati. Nantoy clearly said, if only Father wasn't the one who took us in. Sato asked, <laughs> I'm sick of this life. I just want to live as a normal person. Filial was the worst of them all. She called us crazies and said a bunch of mean things about father. I did not! You're... you're lying! Fultz is trying to frame us! Well, you probably it's know that like little kids only one don't those things. After that, tell lies you when they're being asked for this kind of info. About you were using all those things Clairvy brought up as an excuse to question father. We're birds locked in a cage. The only way out is to destroy it. That's what you said, wasn't it? You little. You just want me gone, don't you? What did I ever do to you, huh? And you, Sheplo, have you forgotten who stood by your sickbed, watched over you, and changed your dressings? Come on, let's hear it then. What's your reason for all this? Uh, Loyalty. <sighs> You're wrong, Filial. We don't want you to die. You're our family. Lie 
here. You wouldn't be doing this if that were the case. So why? Why have you backed us into a corner? We all live in the house of the hearth. You know the type of work we do, Filiol. A single betrayal can cost dozens of us our lives. It's not like it's never happened before. That kind of thing is hard to forget. That's why the House of the Hearth cannot tolerate any form of betrayal. Ever since we came to Poisson, you've had seven secret meetings. A lot of the things you talked about really crossed the line. You've been spying on us for half a month? Wait a second. Now that I think about it, the move to Poisson was just a way to make it easier to spy on us, wasn't it? Because we were all in one place. You've had this planned all along. Phil, you <laughs> Nantoy, you probably shouldn't have met I'm up. <laughs> I owe you both my life. I owe Claire V too. If it weren't for all your help after I got poisoned, I wouldn't be standing here today. If this were any other situation, I, I would feel like we're watching them be on trial price, right now, which is kind of what is life. happening. But <sighs> rules are rules. I'm sorry. My hands are tied. Why? <laughs> That's enough, Filio. We made a mistake. And we should own up to it. We I broke the rules. To die either, plain yeah. and simple. And now we have to face the consequences. I'm sorry, Shaplo. Fultz. I'm sorry, Father. We... accept our punishment. Shaplo. According to the rules of the House of the Hearth, how should these traitors be punished? All those who betray the House pay with their lives. And so it shall be. <laughs> oh. and this does seem very extreme. Let he do something? Father, please wait. Something you want to okay, say. He's doing something. You're, you're, you're getting into a lot of trouble, father, but okay, let's hear it. What Filial and the others did. Does it really count as betrayal? We all come from broken families. From the very first day we joined the House of the Hearth, we wanted nothing more than to make it a real home. But the truth is, none of us know what a real home should look like. I'm not saying I have all the answers. All I know is this. Killing Filial and the others may uphold the rules, but doing so will only bring us further away from being a real family than we've ever been. So please, yeah. Father, please reconsider. I agree with Linny. Father, please. Aww. Linny, you. <sighs> Linny. I also agree with Linny. They just want to be a family. An order once given cannot be rescinded. However, given the extent of your determination, I suppose we shall have to go about this a different uh -oh. way. Uh oh, Draw are we actually ready for this? And face me. Our weapons? Father, are you referring to a duel? Precisely. The rules of the house will not be altered. Traitors must be punished. However, resolving disputes with a duel is also one of our rules, one that also applies to me. Demonstrate a sufficient showing of strength, and I shall offer a concession. Okay, thank goodness. There's a way out of this. There's a way. Okay, this is seeming very, very difficult. But father is way too strong. Even for Lenny. We have to try. He has his card. Did they, did they all get to do three against one? 
others have to duel the knave. We might take all what three of do? them. Can they really win something like that? Do, do, we, do we get and to help out? Those, those people from the house are really going to be executed. Hey, are and you then Winnie, Luna, and Feminine are also probably going to get executed too. Yeah, it's executing them really what she wants. I don't think don't so. You want to say a proper goodbye at least? Can't believe they let Ether talk for this. <laughs> That's awesome. Sorrow causes you to waver. <laughs> Back then, she never actually answered my question. Well, but she already established it's not what she wants. It's just what needs to happen. But that oh. makes the answer pretty obvious, doesn't Looking it? Looking at that expression on her face, she seems really serious about this. Guess that means there's no chance she's throwing the duel on purpose, huh? There's no way the knave will lose on purpose. Although, when guests she has been training them their whole lives are for often this. On their best behavior. And any disputes are less likely to escalate. True. When the time comes, I guess this means we're gonna get roped into this. Appropriate <laughs> in the situation. And lend your help to the house of the hearth. I guess we're gonna do this. What's wrong, traveler? Hey, where are you going? Traveler, I'd like to see for myself what the fourth of the Fatui Harbingers can do. Oh, don't say that with that much confidence, Ether. But I, 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 I agree. You're <laughs> asking to join the duel against the knave? Um, if that's okay, does that? I mean, this, we're, this is all skirting the rules, the the quote unquote rules here. It is. It's, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, a duel usually is one-on-one, -on -one, but I guess if we have four people against somebody super, super powerful, it evens out, right? <laughs> I'll allow it. We do have a ready-made dueling ring at our disposal, after all. <laughs> all I Thank would advise you. is this. Keep a firm grasp on your weapon and give it your all. Any less. Paimon, I think you should probably you stand back, too. Just lose your life. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This is uh-oh territory. Cutscene. We're just starting. We're just starting. Okay. Okay. They all look pretty nervous. What? What? What is this? Why the hesitation? What is that? Now's our There's chance. a few of them. Now's our chance. Okay. If you say so, Winnie. With these rising Did you fire that arrow from somewhere? Because I mean. I am I'm also using it. Closer now. the spotlight. Okay. Get in gear. Only Winnie and Ethan. Hang in there. Where is she? Oh my gosh, this is so cool. I got we're all gonna die, but it's so cool. <laughs> her boss fight just looks amazing. This is the part that I'm most excited for in this update. It's her boss fight. Which I guess, you know, it's gotta be beatable if we have to do this every week. Look out! Look out for what? Now oh, that. <laughs> okay, theme team might not have been the best idea for this fight. With these rising flames. Uh, using Winnie might also not have been the best fight because you can't really dodge very much. Spare your energy. Running is okay. a little use. <laughs> His arrows do 100,000 damage, but not my lane. <laughs> Go! Spare your energy. Father's well, even Running stronger than I expected. And, and, and trust me, I don't, I don't, I don't think after clearing Have Bond of Life here, look at her wing. Ah. Who's next? How do I clear a Bond of Life? I forgot. I don't, I don't really go out of my way to fight those Fatui people like that often. Uh oh. Okay, where's my um? Try to pace yourself. Oh, okay, that build up. Ether. Ah, she's just like a spider. She just like went up and down like on a spider web. Ah. Uh oh. How do I clear a bond of life? I don't. I literally don't know. I've never tried to because it's never. I mean, that much of a big deal. Uh oh. No, 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 no! Theme team might not have been the, the way to go for this. 
I don't even know what I just said. Pear! Pear, you have to save us! Get out of the way. That's such a cool one. She does the backflip thing. That's so cool. I'm sorry. All I can do is just see how... I need to draw my blade then. Oh, see? See, every once in a while, they help the... The, the story, Linny Lina and Femini help out, and they are way stronger than my Linny Lina and Femini. <laughs> and voila! The countdown has begun. In interrupt. Just charge attack? Like a fly tangled in a wind. Uh oh. Uh oh. Spare your energy. Running is a little use. With these rising flames. Oh, shoot. Over here. Over here. Okay, maybe we just run around and just let uh, Story, Linny, and Lynette, and Femine do all the work for me. <laughs> I don't know. This is not looking like it's really going our way right now. Femine! Look out! Spare your energy. Is See? Use. Just let them pick away at her. <laughs> that way I have more chance to just look at her animations. <laughs> look at me. Getting oh, okay. Get out of the way. Out of the way. A bunch of helpless animals. Oh my gosh. And voila! Have voila. a taste of curvature. This is not the end. Does so much? Does so much? <laughs> I don't know, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know how much longer we can hold out like this for. Hang in there. Hang in there. Hang in there. You got it. Charge attack. I did it. I did it. What are these little things? Is this what she was saying something about her power? Like recreates recreates memories, but usually not as. With not as much detail as Clary. I mean, not that it seems to be the biggest part of her story, but she hasn't, still hasn't really explained where her powers are yet. I guess nobody really does that. We just always have to dig for that information ourselves. Oh, you can see the arrow. Oh, oh shh. <laughs> no, we don't need to lower the difficulty. What I need is not to go with the canonical characters for this. <laughs> okay, let's change our team before we go in. Oh, we can just go. Not, not, no, not you guys. You guys. Okay. <laughs> Farina can heal. Okay. Oh my gosh, Father, we have to go through this whole dialogue? Out of my way. Father, you chose to conceal a threat to the oh, house. Wait, just let me do the fight again. Overall, I trade Father. This is too intense. It's too sad. <laughs> it's too sad. Yes, Father. Secret midnight meeting. Nandoy clearly Sato at Filial was the worst of them all. I did not <sighs> your your It's not like I'm the where birds. You little. You just want me gone, don't you? What did I ever do to you? And you, Shaplo? Uh, uh. You're wrong, Filial. We don't want you to die. Liar. We all live a single betrayal can cost. That's why the House of the Hearth cannot tolerate. You've been Filial. I owe you both my life. If this were any Why? That's enough, Filial. I'm sorry, Shaplo. Yeah, this is this was really long dialogue. I kind of wish that we just According to the rules, start at the, who the fight. The house. And right. so it shall be. <laughs> I know, I don't want them to die either. I don't think Arlequino wants them to die either. Father, please and she wait. said she has to, she Something has to you uphold to say, her rules and she can't really we all come make from concessions. The truth is, so, none of us know she's gonna what let us win. I'm not saying I have a, so please, We're gonna father, have to earn, agree with we're still gonna have to earn it. <laughs> father, please. Linny. I also agree with Linny. <sighs> An order once given ca however. Our weapon? Father, are you referring to it precisely? 
The rule, however, resolving disputes with a duel is also one of our rules, one that also applies to me. I mean, also, we can't really see it because she's wearing gloves, I think. But there's some, there's something about like her hands too. Like it was all, like it was all dark because of her the curse and the power she wields. At least you've seen the animation. Something about, you know, she was burying a spider. Yeah, that's right. We're gonna fight for family. Did you hear that, Traveler? Letting the others have to duel the knave if they lose the- I'm just having a lot. Okay, and what I gotta remember is I'm really tempted to want to use the Salon Solitaire with Farina a lot, but we gotta use the, the singer. We have to <laughs> heal up, especially with all this Bond of Life stuff. Okay, I'm, I'm ready. I'm so ready. When guests are around, families are often on their best. When the time comes, make the choice that you deem most appropriate in the situation. And, and yes, we have to make the choice to help the House of the Hearth. Hey, where are you going? Traveler? You're asking to join the We're gonna help. We're the gonna leader. help them win within Although the rules. I would, we do have a ready-made dueling ring. All I would advise is this. Keep a firm grasp and it's on this eventful place that the duel shall take all. place once again. Any less. Oh my gosh, we didn't even get past the first phase. <laughs> okay. So, if I stand still, it does not stop the fight from starting. It's always going to last time. Ah! Does she have anything to say about Skaramouche? Or, I mean, yes, he's been erased, so nobody nobody remembers him. But, like, before, like, if you're at a point in the game where he hasn't been erased yet from, from time, or from memory, I suppose, more accurate. Um, does she have anything to say about him? Is it my turn now? Oh yeah, that's right. Skarmish and Senora finally got their Batuli Harbinger jacket outfit in, in that anime show too. That was, that was pretty cool. Was Last time at, you know, Senora's funeral, there was some not notable absences, including, you know, the, the person of whom the funeral was for. <laughs> Draw. Yes, you do. I'm sorry, Femini. I'm sorry. It just has to be this way. Okay. I know. All of these archons and honorary archons we have here. This is this. This is all of our power, all of our strength that it's gonna take in order for us to be able to win here. Yeah. If. Me. Yeah. Is it my turn? Oh, this is the way to do it. This is what we need to do. <laughs> the sky is all red now. Uh oh. Uh oh, I think we made her a little bit angry. And by a little bit, I mean, she was already angry. So she's gonna be okay. Ah! Well, that's not gonna draw attention to absolutely everybody in Fontaine over here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Cinder of Two World Flames, Para. She looks so cool. I'm sorry, I know we're about to die, but this is so cool. <laughs> uh, we had a oh no. If we had a nickel for. Why, what are those- those little things are still watching us. If we had a nickel for every time we fought a Fatui Harbinger, whose second phase later turned up for them to be a fire bug, we'd have two nickels, which is not a lot. But it's weird that it happened twice, isn't it? <laughs> okay, that helped. Now's our chance? Now's our chance! Over here? Ah, Grim Malkin Cat! I'm used to this. Uh oh, uh oh. Everything is futile. 
This guy. Did we win? Uh, I'm not exactly sure this is a win right here. And our dull blade. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm sorry too. <sighs> oh, none of us are actually dead. Oh, okay. That's because we're not the ones that she's trying to kill. Father, no! Oh, neither! Made it out, did you? <laughs> You're stronger than I expected. Oh, well, we are pretty strong. Uh, I... Oh, I don't think we should have looked into her eyes. Strong enough to beat me. <laughs> what? Are they gonna live? Did, did we fail? I believe we can end things here. It's not often that we get to enjoy the company of guests, after all. We wouldn't want things to get too out of hand. <coughs> I think everybody's gonna need to take a nap right? and rest Wait. after that. Given that I am the victor of this duel, as agreed, the punishment stands. No! I never thought things would end like this. However, everyone involved in the duel demonstrated a remarkable level of strength and determination. In light of this, I'm prepared to change the method of execution. Oh, technicalities, technicalities. Elwar, the bottled flames I gave you for safekeeping. Do you still have them? Y yes I wasn't sure what they were for, but I kept them super safe. I didn't lose a single one. Wonderful. Then, in just a moment, I'll have you administer them. Bottled flames? Indeed. They're the product of a secret experiment. Under certain special circumstances, flames can be extracted from my person and preserved. Once ingested, searing pain will spread across every inch of your body. No harm will come to you physically, but your memories oh, will be burned away. That's what happened to that guy, the newspaper guy. So she must have let him go. And erased his memories. That's why he, he didn't recognize her. So that way he can't go around spilling secrets. Oh. So I guess she is still killing them. But sort of killing their their presence within this family 
basically kicking them out of the, the house. See, I knew it was all gonna turn out okay, but I, there was some times there I really was doubting. But <laughs> I don't know, she's very intimidating, isn't she? <laughs> okay, well, it sounds like you're all gonna get the freedom you want. And that's probably what she wished she could have given to Clairvy too. If you can withstand the pain, when you awake, you'll have forgotten everything you know about the House of the Hearth, and will be expelled. Expelled seems a lot nicer than being executed. In other words, administering this concoction will kill the version of you that grew up in the house, and give you a new identity. So that's what happened to that other guy. He wasn't killed at all. Yeah, that's right. He was killed, in quotation marks. And with that death, he got a brand new life of his own. Memory is a mysterious thing indeed. Losing a portion of your memories will alter your sense of self. No, if my understanding of the knave is right, she really thinks of that as killing him. The horror that lived in the house of the hearth is dead. The one that remains is simply a normal person living out his life with his beloved. <laughs> Even so, it's much better than actually ending their lives. So, you're just letting us go, father? Well, not really, but <laughs> you sort of, yeah. Memories are extremely important. Once consumed by flame, the version of you standing before me will die, and our secrets will die with you. So no, I don't intend to just let you go, because the person who survives will be nothing but a stranger. Even so, even so, I won't have to live in fear anymore. I'm sorry. Only that, you won't even remember having I'm lived sorry in fear in I let the first you place. But I... I really... Don't cry, Filial. You haven't left the house yet, so there are still rules to be followed, yes? Remember what I taught you. Anger makes you impulsive, sorrow causes you to waver. Don't let yourself be controlled by your emotions. Of course. I'll remember. Dry your tears, and go pursue the life you really want. Yes, yes Father. Father. Chapleau. Fultz, Elwar, take them back to Poisson, and bring Lenny and the others as well. I prepared three extra vials of bottled flames. As for whether to take them, the choice is yours. Goodbye, children. The next time we meet, I will no longer be your father. Thank you for all you've done for the house. I hope you have bright futures ahead of you. Everyone's gonna be okay. Father. That's a relief. Let's go. Here, grab my arm, Linny. I'll help you walk back. Thank you. Bye, Linny. Bye, Lynette. Bye, Oh, so what do you make of all of that? I guess it's not really anything because she can't really process the present because she's stuck in the past. Can we talk now? I've been waiting for a super long time. You really are, Perry. Aren't you? I haven't seen you in so long. How come you're all grown up? Wait, did I somehow travel to the future on accident? Or am I dreaming? <sighs> what a long dream. <laughs> Neither. Kind of traveled to the future. You died, Clairvy. That's what happened. Straightforward as always. You could have at least sugarcoated it a little. Look, she's 
Oh, it's fine, Pywin. If this really is Clairvy's younger self, then I'd say she's probably had enough lies. But... Oh. Okay. Yeah, then. see? Huh? At least that's there's honesty. It? You accepted it just like that? Yep. If that's what Perry says happened, then I believe her. Perry wouldn't lie to me. Plus, I don't really need to know why I'm like this. I'm more curious about what happens in the future. If you're a harbinger now, Perry, that means Mother is gone, isn't she? Can you tell me about it? I want to know what happened to her. And to me. You never I stopped to trying to, to defy a, fate. To repeat of the story. At first, heard. no one believed you. You could only vent your frustrations to the moon. In fact, you often sought comfort in the night sky. You wanted to see the Aurora, so one night we promised each other we would go to Snezhnaya to see it together. Later on, you tried to run away, but you were brought back each time. Mother spared your life, but it wasn't out of kindness. Instead, she decided to make an example of you by slowly torturing you over time. That way, the other children would know what happens to traitors. Still, you never gave up. Mother hoped that through ruthless duel after ruthless duel, she would be able to crown an ultimate victor among the children she raised. But you called on everyone to unite, to fight to a draw in order to reduce casualties. Your efforts may have only delayed the inevitable, but still. You gave them hope. You tried everything Hope. you could think of, but every attempt that, ended so in failure. That was really special, then. Still, you never turned your sword on Crucibina, and you never turned it on me. On that gloomy day, you told me, for the last 16 years of my life, I've done everything I can to fight for freedom. But now, I realize that the only freedom I truly possess is the freedom to choose to die. I never imagined I would say something like that. I must have been feeling really worn down, but somehow, yeah. I still think I understand. According to Mother's plan, only one of us was going to make it until the end. And I always hoped that person would be you. If I could do it all over again, I still don't think I would make a different choice. Even when I first met you, I knew you'd be able to do what I couldn't. Is that so? Even now, I'm not sure I truly understand what kind of freedom you were trying to pursue. But as the head of the House of the Hearth, and as the children's father, I've tried to give them the most basic of freedoms. The freedom to choose their own fate. It's something I discussed with the Udex of Fontaine. The children who want to leave the house will have their memories wiped clean of all secrets pertaining to the organization. Oh, turn, and that makes a lot more sense now that we know that she can actually erase people's memories. For their past. The whole of water course, analogy. I won't simply hand freedom to them on a silver platter. They have to fight for it and prove themselves worthy of it. Only freedom yes. that is earned has true value. That is value. what we witnessed here today. That's more than enough. That's exactly the kind of life I was fighting for. You know, yeah. Perry, I think you're a pretty amazing king, and a really great father, too. I'm really happy that you're the one who took over the house. I guess I do have one regret, though. I still haven't seen the outside world. Well, it just so happens that our dear guests over here have been to many nations and traveled to countless places. Perhaps they yeah. would be willing to tell you what the outside world is like. Really? Of course. Of course. We've traveled all over the place. We got so many stories, we could probably talk your ears off for three days straight. Talk about the land of animal, the nation of you freedom. Know, I used to dream of being a bard. Playing the <laughs> lute while swinging into the wind of freedom. <laughs> Even if there was no one there to listen, I would have continued to sing no what? matter what. That's amazing. <laughs> Talk about the land of Geo, the nation of contracts. Ah, that's where Mora comes from. I never knew that before. If I asked Mora, I would buy three new dresses. One for me. One for Perry, and one for Mother. It's 
just too bad Perry doesn't like wearing dresses. And Mother? Well, she probably wouldn't accept something like that either. <laughs> I guess I just have to keep them all for me then. I could wear a different one every day. She's been through so much. She's such a small child and she's been through so much. And... <laughs> And she's still so thoughtful of others, even though she hasn't been treated well. Which is... That's a beautiful thing that should be protected, not basically exploited. Talk about the land of Electro Nation Those of Eternity. Those yokai you mentioned, what do they look like? <laughs> all sorts of, this one all guy sorts of creatures. On his head and a super scary face. Are there any yokai like that? Oh, so that's yeah. what you're talking about, Noni. Yep, we've met one, and <laughs> let Paimon tell you, they're not nearly as scary as they look. Yeah. Talk about the land of Dendro, Nation of Wisdom. I was always too afraid to skip Mother's fighting lessons. But at the Academia, I bet you could do all sorts of secret things in class. Things that have <laughs> nothing to do with studying. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Being able to study whatever you want without having to fear for your life actually sounds pretty great. It really does, and for somebody... <laughs> Eventually the conversation returns to Fontaine, the nation she once called the home. The situation was super dangerous. Linny and Lynette were accused of committing a crime, and they were going to have to stand trial at the Opera Epi Club. Yeah, it was super oh, bad, no. and we had to be their lawyers. It hard for all of you. What happened next? Don't worry, we were able to turn the situation around super quickly. Ah, uh, thanks to Detective <laughs> Paimon, of course. <laughs> That's right. How did you do that? Come on, tell me. Ahem. Okay, so it was like this. After the failed magic show, we rushed to the scene and... Clarity is listening really intently to Paimon's story about our time in Fontaine. She seems really happy, like all her troubles have been forgotten. Maybe this is the first time she's ever been able to truly relax, but I'm not sure how long this moment can last. But Shadows it does seem don't like have the capacity her wishes to learn or grow. have been Any granted. Any new information they encounter is quickly forgotten over time. As time passes, she'll probably forget everything we've told her and go back to being that scared little girl. I was so busy thinking I also didn't notice the sun has risen. Clarity. Sunlight. You've worked tirelessly from the shadows to overthrow the House of the Hearth. Now, by my authority as the Knave, I shall announce how this matter ends. You are hereby expelled from the House of the Hearth. You are no longer tied to this place, nor are you bound by its rules. <sighs> You're saying that I can finally leave? Yeah. Uh, You've you earned your freedom. The outside world as well? Huh? Oh. oh, I almost forgot. There's no getting older for me. Still, seeing who you grew up to be makes me really happy, Harrowware. Mm -hmm. Take care of yourself. Goodbye. May we meet again someday. Goodbye, Clervy. her peaceful end though and she finally got the freedom that she fought so hard for and earned with her own hands and I think that that shows now her spirit can truly be at peace she even got to hear all these stories about what the world outside is like and I think she can finally rest now I also have certain sentiments left unsaid I wanted to tell her that the aurora I saw in Snezhnaya was just as beautiful as the ones in the pictures. But a shadow's memories reset at dawn. 
Had we delayed any longer, we wouldn't have had the time to say goodbye. Whatever regrets may linger, let them be lost to the coming of a new day. Winnie, Father. you're already back? <coughs> Let's go check it out. This is where everything has happened, right? The first fight she had, and now this one. Father, the bottled flames have been administered. Filio and the others have left the house. And you? What have you decided? <clears throat> I was gonna stick around, of course. Thank you for giving us that choice, Father. But we never wanted to leave the house. It's the only home we've ever known. Yeah. Lynette and Fremenet feel the same way. They're recuperating back at the Hotel Bouffe d'Ete. But I decided to come back and tell you where we stood. I'm sure you're well aware of the expectations I have for you. I want you to follow in my footsteps and become the next king of the house. Yet you seem to have a lot different of ideas. I must admit, I'm rather surprised by your decision to stay. There's nothing wrong with choosing to live a quiet life. Leading this organization is a heavy responsibility. One well, not sounds so like easily is chosen to be by here. someone so forced a little bit different onto the than throne. I just no forced never understood what you saw in me what made you believe i was deserving of that throne you're brave talented and most importantly you cherish your family you would do anything to protect them even if it costs you your life <laughs> yeah Speaking up back there was so brave of you, Linny. It's all thanks to you that we were able to convince Father to back down. You're a hero, Linny. Hero? Father is the real hero. Had Father gone all out during the duel, there's no way I would have walked away with my life. She must have had it all planned. She wanted to the make them earn their the freedom. The moment she but... suggested a duel. I'm not we deserving had to of make that it title. difficult, but she didn't really want to kill them. I'm not strong enough or smart enough. You're wrong. In my opinion, all you need to be deserving of the throne is conviction and the necessary strength to act on it. We may have different ideas of what it means to be a family, but you can hardly be said to lack conviction. What you truly lack is strength. For someone of your talent, though, that's something that will come with time. Even without that strength, you still chose to face me in a duel, even though the odds were stacked against you. That capacity to honor your convictions is what I truly see in you. Father. No one knows what the future holds, what tragedy or triumph may be in store. Being at the head of this organization requires the strength of will to face whatever comes. Caution will only hold you back. If reaching a certain standard were required to go after what you want, I would never have succeeded in killing my predecessor. Back then, there was still a considerable gap between our abilities. Strength may decide the ultimate victor, but those who let a lack of strength dictate their decisions or undermine their convictions will never be worthy of the throne. I understand, Father. Thank you. Children must grow up to surpass their parents. Only then can a family continue to flourish. The road ahead is not an easy one. So I'll ask you one last time. Are you certain you want to stay? You've done so much for me, Father. And that kindness must be repaid. Plus, with Project Stuja at hand, there are many dangers ahead. 
I have a feeling we're going to be hearing about Paget Stusha a bit more Protecting in the future. my family at all costs. That's my conviction. Then you're welcome to stay. Yes. As for Project Stuja, you need not be too concerned. If those cowardly businessmen and heartless dignitaries try to take us down, I'm prepared to teach heartless them a lesson. Heartless dignitaries. <laughs> Having members who longed for the light was our organization's last weakness. With those members no longer among our ranks, the House of the Hearth is like a spider hiding in the shadows. We need only wait for our prey to come to us. At present, our imperative is to use their plan to our advantage. In doing so, a crimson moon shall rise amid the frigid blizzards of winter. No demonstration of loyalty shall go unrewarded, and no sacrifice shall be in vain. As for the two of you, whether we meet again as friend or foe, I'll remember the camaraderie we shared in this moment. Me too. No matter how this arduous very the journey ahead, experience. I hope we both reach our desired destination. Oh, there's more. Oh, wonder is dead. Oh, okay, that was a lot, a lot, a lot. Fontaine Fountain of Lucene? What's at the Fountain of Lucene? I mean, yeah. <laughs> In this case, just let this, letting the story speak for itself a bit. I mean, this Harlequino is pretty ruthless, just like her predecessor, but I think harsh but fair is sort of her. We can't actually, that's why the rewards went up, right? <laughs> but it's not, I, I can't even, I can't even get there. <laughs> I don't know exactly what they want us to. Well, they're just notifying us that I, I could go there. But yeah. With the way that this Arlequino, this knave is running the House of the Hearth, there is more of a chance for everybody to be a real family. And. I mean, from like, like, I once said, from her, or from like. Ether said from her perspective, she really did kill them. But in her eyes, the way it spins, when she kills them, she also sets them free. And that freedom had to be earned. And I'm glad that she could give Clairvy that closure, that same closure, too, just like she did for those other members that she expelled. So that if you truly desire it, and that's what you shall get. And as for Project Stuja, I'm sure we're gonna be hearing a bit more about that in the future. This this whole story quest seems very interlude like in terms of what's gonna be going on in the future. I mean, we haven't heard very much from the Abyss Order. I mean notice that the Fatui really have like been sort of the main antagonistic fraction. Because we fought them in Liyue, Inazuma, and Sumeru. And then in Fontaine was the First Nation. They really had their own problems to deal with, with the prophecy, not relating to the Abyss Order or the Fatui. Um, but yeah, with all that in mind, it seems the Fatui have not stopping there, have more plans. Uh, and so do we, like, we're eventually gonna, <laughs> we're eventually gonna um, fight the doctor and make him pay for all the hor horrific things he's done to a lot of characters we like and a lot of characters we don't even know who are we're innocent and you know we're really hurt beyond measure to say is putting it very lightly <sighs> yep but it seems that this has been another you know positive interaction with the fatui as Lenny said it the first time we really talked about it, it's like it's a large enough fa organization that all the different factions have different different goals, and that's why we seem to be friends with some Fatui and foes with others. <sighs> Two days later. Two days later.
There we go. And look how beautiful that sky is too. I'm glad Clarivee was able to see the sunlight. And, and be able to imagine all the beautiful things there are in the outside world. Okay, two days later. Didn't Winnie say that Lynette and Fremenet were recovering at the Hotel Bouffe de Tay? Oh, Paimon wonders how they're doing. That's where we started off today. Maybe we should go check on them. They're back at their home. Well, actually, you know, home is where your family is. But they're at their, their home base home. went through a lot. <laughs> what a relief. Yeah. What about you? Are you feeling all right? There's no need to worry. I knew you'd come out unscathed. Us, on the other hand, well, we've been bedridden for two days. Well, we I only made it out unscathed over. because she wasn't going to oh, actually hurt the and guests. I wanted to ask, <laughs> is Claire V gone? Linny and the other members have left Poisson and returned to the House of the Hearth. According to him, there haven't been any more sightings of a spirit roaming the house. Her wish has been fulfilled. She's, glad. she's okay now. Father yeah. came to check up on us two we days ago and told us about what happened with Crucibina and Clairvy. Actually, I... That's right, I've because in Femini's character story talks about how, you know, he, when he joined, it was under the, the previous Knave. Wait, what? You've met the former Knave? Crucibina died a year after Clairvy. It was during the year between their deaths that I joined the House of the Hearth. I see. Crucibina had an extremely cruel and radical way of doing things. While she was alive, the atmosphere in the house was suffocating. When I joined, though, the experiment she valued so much had already come to an end, and all the people involved, dead and injured alike, were gone. Crucibina never talked about the past with us newcomers. A couple of months after I joined, Father killed Crucibina and burned all her files. With that, the names of all the people subjected to her experiments, Claire V included, were lost to the flames, along with the painful memories they represented. Father took in Lenny and me a couple months after that, but she never mentioned anything about Crucibina or Claire V. Mm. Yeah. It really seems like something she was planning to keep to herself. That's why nobody knew. The last time you talked to her, did she mention why she kept it a secret for so long? Probably not to. to she said she didn't not want us to be affected by the darkness of the past. Yeah. She was worried we'd develop a false sense of gratitude towards her if we knew about it. The foundation of a family should be free of any corrupting influence. Whatever happened in the past, it has nothing to do with who we are now. And that's what Father told us in the end. But I still thanked her for everything. It was only after hearing about what Crucibina did that I finally realized how insignificant our lives could have been. The members of the house meant nothing to her. To say that she valued them in any way even just as a tool, would probably be giving her too much credit. If Father yeah. hadn't taken over the House of the Hearth, I probably oh, would have already... Femine. I know, right? We're... We're glad that she's gone now. Yeah, don't think about that. She saved you Father in the end. Father rarely brings up the fact that she saved us. She doesn't believe that being indebted to her should be what ties us together. But... Even if we didn't owe her anything, we would still choose to stay. Because this is our home. We may have arguments right. or... Home is where your family is. 
Some people may even choose to leave. But as long as father is here, we will always have a home. Whether the path before us is bathed in sunlight or shrouded in shadow, we'll follow father wherever she chooses to go. So I wanted to say thank you for helping us make it through this crisis. Without your help, we could have lost a lot more along the way. Oh, we didn't do anything, really. <laughs> yeah, just invite us back as guests and we'll call it even. We're always happy to hang out with of you guys. Of course. You're welcome anytime. <laughs> Are yeah. Ilio and Nantoy okay? I actually I mean, saw them they're probably figuring out morning. their new lives. And they didn't recognize me. Considering they don't remember From anything. What I could tell, they were drinking coffee and talking about one of the operas that started running recently. They seemed happy. If I had to take a guess, I would say they finally found the kind of life they always wished for. Aww. I mean, it's really hard if you don't remember anything from your past to settle in. But yeah, eventually, even if you don't remember your past, you still remember the fact that you wanted to be free. And you... I cherish that. All right. Well, there we go. Learned a little bit more about the House of the Hearth. Are they actually at this cafe? No, it doesn't look like it. It'd be kind of cool if they were, though. <laughs> yeah. Learning a little bit more about the House of the Hearth. The past, the present, the future. And it looks like there were dark days before. And there are comparably better days ahead. And even if this Project Stuja stuff seems to get in the way, at least those who have chosen to remain in the House of the Hearth have each other as a family and they're willing to stick together to do whatever it takes to protect each other. And, you know, with people like Arlecchino and even Lenny, you know, sort of at the helm of things, you know, making sure everything's okay. I know that everybody around is going to be okay, too. And aren't we just so glad that, you know, under a new director, uh, new management, things in the House of the Hearth seem to be a lot better than they were back in, you know, the time where Clairvy and Pere were children there, and even Femine, too. Things... I mean, if you fight hard enough, eventually things will change. Just, I guess, the sort of story that took place here. And yeah, not going to be the last we see of any of these characters, I'm sure. We will definitely be meeting our Lakino again, as well as our good friends Linny and Lynette and Fremini. Um, I haven't even done Lynette's hangout. Maybe we could do that. They will all show up in it, I'm sure. <laughs> But yeah, I guess we have to try this boss fight now. Scattered ruins. This courtyard was once a wonder to behold, but now lies desolate. The previous battle has been buried in the dying light, but the next duel shall come as long as the family endures. I guess. It's pouring out here. I guess we're gonna get started oh, with this. Scattered the water ruins. Levels aren't rising, are I gotta look. I gotta look up Arlecchino's character story at some point. Because I'm sure it will delve into details about what exactly her powers are. <laughs> like, the whole thing about two worlds. The two worlds and the moon. And, you know, all the crosses and the, the spider theme. And I swear there was a beetle over here. What? <laughs> and, and <laughs> you know, just what is this curse that it inflicted her? Because... That curse had something to do with why she was really chosen to... <laughs> chosen to be the heir of the House of the Hearth. Albeit now she's making her own change. She's made her own changes to it. I mean, what happened to her though that she would become cursed in the first place? That is something I'm sure we will figure out soon enough. Destiny leaves no room for excuses. All choices must undergo the trial of sharpened blades. 
naive mistakes, ill-defined portrayals, the courage to bring about the better ends, all these must brave a test of strength. The rude awakening you received while facing the crimson moons lingers in you still. Relive, relive this battle in your memories and you may learn something new. Yeah, that's a lot of what we do is relive this battle. Pretty much the fight with um, the, the wolf is like the only one. It's not us reliving memories. Like it's an actual, hey, you, you want to do a duel kind of thing. A candle he picked up in the ruins after killing a deal against the knave. Legend has passed down claims that when the candle's flame flickers in the hands of sinners, the light may become shadows, making footsteps faint and masking fatal intent. You cannot tell what material this is made of. It weeps no wax after burning, releasing only black ash that scatters into the wind, drifting towards the distant unknown. That definitely sounds scary. Silken feathers, a crystal that you receive, you picked up in the ruins after completing the duel against the knave. The already cooled blood and fire still maintain the shape of a feather that is framed in with solidified sleek black threads. Before their thoughts have matured, young children are reliant on the meticulous care of their parents, just as fledgling, fledglings need the ages of an adult wing. It is to fulfill the, such wishes that father wove dangerous spider silk into a facsimile of feathers that she might grant her family some warmth. That's right. She raised them to be strong so that we, they can last without her. If they, they can stand on their own feet and fight her with their own strength. An earring you picked up in the ruins after completing a duel against the knave. The red symbol of plant resembles the image in her eyes, a declaration and a rejection alike. The orphans live lie. The orphans, the orphaned live lives. That's okay, because it's live and then lives. But no, the orphaned live lives filled with suffering from childhood. This she sees and keeps in her heart. As fate casts an examining eye on humanity, so too will humans cast judgment upon fate. All right, we beat it with this team before. So how, how bad could this go? <laughs> but I don't know, the, the real fight is always a little bit different. What are these? So now, now these little orange things are not sitting on the sidelines there. Like, what does this represent? Are they, are they the children? Are this, I mean, are they, I mean, are, are they symbolic of the children? What do they represent something else? I mean, I, I do feel that they probably have something to do with the memories recreated from her, her power. You <laughs> afraid? Or do you not even have the courage to be afraid? Now you shall perish. Is it my turn now? With these rising I'm gonna flames. Freeze, but we're gonna need to just get some healing. Something. The Temple of Wisdom! Is it my turn now? Strike up. Inazuma shines eternal! <laughs> With a fall oh, of this darkness, is so exciting. <laughs> The next turn to tackle well, one is just Scarlet. Scarlet. Okay. Can I do it? Spare your energy. Running is a little Where is she? Oh, how's y'all over there? <laughs> Whoops. No, no, no. I already I need the healing. <laughs> Where are you? Okay. Oh no. Well, charge attacks. Charge attacks is what we're doing. Charge attacks is what we're doing here. Illusion shattered. Not bad. To be a worthy opponent. Down. Okay. Phase two. Phase two. Sure, everyone in the news talked about this big glowing red beam coming from over here. <laughs> Cinder of two worlds flames. Yeah, we gotta know what that exactly means. <laughs> All right, you ready, Ether? 
That dull blade was has really been look at her, she's on her spider web. Oh my gosh. My blade is all that remains. The music! There is no escape. The wind rises. Our music. You dare to gaze upon me? You dare to gaze upon me? If you're thirsty for blood, what do we do? I guess we did the charge attack thing. <laughs> I'd be scared to, to gaze. Okay. It seems like that was quite dangerous what we did last time. Oh, okay. No, no, no. After the feast. Okay, we're getting lots of achievements here. There is no escape. Now you shall perish. Which means if I did want to pull for her, this would be excellent. Your punishment made manifest. Sometimes only the beginning. Thank you. <laughs> Everyone is going to live through this fight. This is what I have decided, right? No, 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 no. There we go. <laughs> oh, I'm going to try that again afterwards. That was so satisfying. <laughs> All right. Guess we're gonna be getting those for the next few characters if we want to use them. Interesting, interesting. What exactly is making the flames stay here? I wonder. Especially when it's raining out. Okay. Yeah. So happy, Clairvy. Finally, it's at peace now. <laughs> I mean, she was so mature for her age, and that just shows that, you know, she's just a child, and yet she's subjected to so much, forced to grow up so fast to fight for what she desired. <laughs> so I'm glad that now she finally gets to have that rest and that freedom. Yeah. That was truly really an experience. <laughs> the next story quest is going to be later this update with Sino's second story quest and that's another that's another one I'm looking forward to because right now as we're trying to figure out you know more about Arlequino and where her powers come from I guess we're gonna find out actually more about where Sino's powers come from so that's gonna be cool for the next video we could go fight them and then I could learn more about what the bond of life does or we could just you know it's raining here and maybe just you know, absorb the peace and quiet of a place that has been marked with so many battles. Now just here in stillness and peace. Yeah. All right, with that, I guess I will see you all in the next episode. <laughs> Exploring Remoria soon. Uh, yeah, take care, everyone. Have a nice day. Bye. <laughs>